Hang on, I'm getting there. Hello everybody, I'm just getting sorted so just please bear with me. I'm posting some links. Listen to some music pods while I uh, spam the links. I don't want to manage the group I want to post. Oh my god, this mod sucks. Hello Richard, hello Santa, hello Bet, hello Will. I'm just getting sorted. Uh, one second, I'm just spamming some links online and then uh, we'll get started. My start time was around 12, but I don't know how to like make it pending on a live video, so I just did it. Just spam in the room. Hang on. Hello, Richard. Hello. Santa. Hello. Matt. Hello. Bill. I'm just getting sorted. Uh, one second. I'm just spamming some links online and then uh, we'll get started. My start time was around 12, but I don't know how to like make it pending. Down a updates available. Updates available. No, not now. That's funny. All right, let me turn the audio off on this. Okay. Whoa. We're missing something. I'm getting a tea. One second. Okay. It's too early for Hofbrow here. Now my phone's going off. Eight million times. Who is it? It's Q. Alright. What's going to be the biggest change in Pi Mega 3? Let me turn my volume down here. Um, let's see. Yeah, wait. Uh, what time is it over there? It is currently 11.47 a.m. Uh, how does my microphone sound? Does it sound okay? Am I too loud? Is it too muffled? Is everything okay? USB cables everywhere. Um, Jonathan, what is going to be the biggest change in Pi Mega 3? Or is it just something like fine-tuning here and there? Any specific goals? Yeah, I'm going to go over that in a little bit. As you can see, it's right here. It's kind of blurry because how I have the camera focused. I will move this and readjust and we'll come in like we did last time. I'm not planning on doing a four-hour stream, but you never know, you know. My glass is really crusty. I apologize in advance. Maybe I'll put it on the floor so I can knock it over. Thank you. All right. Let me fire this up. Let's 
So, yeah. I'm just going to go to... Uh, One of the coolest changes on this is, this is Amiga OS, or Scalos OS, um, but it runs modern Firefox. Now, it's not the fastest ball of wax. This is a pre-alpha. Remember, 2.0 came out, what, two, three weeks ago? There's YouTube. I can play my own stream on this box. I can even go full screen. So, watch. Like I said, it's not the fastest at this time. I got it plugged in Ethernet. But that is basically the PyMega 2 setup. One of the coolest changes on this there we go. is this is Amiga OS. Or hey, Scalos Keith, OS. let me uh, stop uh, that. But it runs modern for Firefox. Pause. Now, it's not. And it can go full screen. Full screen, there's me, full screen. Live the fastest ball of wax. So that's one cool feature. Modern web browsing. Now it's host run. What does host run mean? That means that it's gonna run uh where's the beers? It's eleven fifty AM here, so I don't maybe in a little bit. I do have an iced tea, sweet tea poured and sitting down below. I got Tanya. We got the letter opener and we have a couple things. Now, a lot of these were donations, which thank you as always. They will be used. A couple of them I've done projects for um, with PCBWay. We're going to get into that. Uh, an eBay order, or no, a, a web order for me for the 3D printer that everyone so kindly hooked me up. Can I zoom in to see? Yes, I will zoom in on PyMega 3 in just a minute once we get sorted. My goal was to start at 12... But when I hit the stream button, there was no, like, countdown timer or waiting room. I don't know. I'm using OBS on the Windows machine with my own stream here, so I'm watching the chats. I have to keep remember to turn live chat on and remind me tomorrow. All right. All right, so we're 24 people. My phone's going off like mad, so that is in mute. Oh, very nice. Mr. Kevin Q from Holden Modified just sent me a really cool photo of something he has. All right, so, you know, I will wait. We're at 27. So I don't care. That's fine. Uh, 90 seconds ago I started streaming. Really? I think it was longer than that. So, I have hair all over my Pymega clothes. I have a dog, in case you didn't know. And um, this is strange, weird, but thanks. Someone, I've asked all my friends, my family, uh, different people that I hang out with. Someone sent me or my dog, Barney, the Australian Shepherd, a dog bed and a bone. I've asked everyone, so if, if you were the person that sent that to me, it had to be someone that has my address. Uh, I've asked everyone, so thank you. He sleeps on it all the time. It's uh, a really nice gift. Uh, Steven, you just got the Pi 400 installed Pi Mega 2. Uh, please do the audio fixes. They're linked in the Discord channel. Also in the description of the original release video. Uh, Doug Compton, 10 Mark, did a follow-up review on Pi Mega 2 a couple uh, weeks ago. Go ahead and check his channel out. I can't link it right now. Um, but, thanks Shane. Um, but, uh... Yeah, he, he covers a couple of the audio fixes and timing to, you know, get the games more in line with each other. Like, right now, I'm just running the 2000 Vampire, the 4040 was listening to music mods, and the 3000, I just have uh, Frontier Elite 2 running just for some stress testing on the 040 cooling solution that I did uh, a while ago when I um, 
put the little hot glue 40 millimeter fan. I got some updates for that coming in the future. Got a whole another series of regular Amiga videos coming very shortly. I post two a week, one to Patreon, and then the follow rolls onto YouTube. So the 3.2.1 EEPROM uh, was the latest one that I just posted for the Amiga 600, which is right there. Then we got the 12. There's a 500 shoved over there. I got a couple more things and these. So I guess I'll just get started. Over the past month and a half, I have graciously been receiving donations and things uh, from all over the world. And first off, I thank each and every one of you. It's greatly appreciated. Everything will be used on this channel. And everything that I get usually goes back into someone Amiga-wise, somehow, some way, shape, or form. Bloody hell, you're not late, Jonathan. How are you late? We were just chatting a second ago. I believe so. I have like... There we go. So many things going on. So, um, let me put this on... Do not disturb mode here. I have to have it on vibrate because this goes off literally every 10 seconds. It would annoy most people, but I don't mind. Uh, send me a drink to Stephen from Shane. Well, Stephen, just get the blah, 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 blah. John Weissen. I'm having a nice drink of vodka. Wow. 4.53 p.m. there. Okay, so without further ado... I have a very great group of friends on Discord, on YouTube, on Facebooker, eBooger, Patreon. You guys are just outstanding. As you can tell by this big pile of random things. Now, several of these I bought myself. Um, you know, I bought Tanya. No, this was my father's hammer from the 50s. But it has a Tanya sticker on it. I use that for hard resets. My letter opener, of course, I bought in the 90s. Um, I bought a, how do you say this? Noctua 80 millimeter fan. It's got like the little display presentation. I purchased this myself. This was going to be for the Amiga 3000's power supply. Um, but then the 4000 is so freaking loud for some reason. I don't know. I did recap the power supply. Hey, Karen. Um, Master Miscellaneous, hello from the UK. Hello, everyone from the UK, Germany, Sweden, Sweden, Russia. The analytics are all over the place. Portugal. Cool. So the idea was I was going to put this in the 4, 000, uh, 3,000, but I'm going to put it in the 4,000 now because I don't know if you can hear the ambient noise coming off the heaters over here but it's probably burning you know 5,000 watts of power and 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 whatever so knock to a fan uh, supposedly they're really quiet I've heard great things I had to order this I have a micro center about 80 miles from me that I can oh it's got like all sorts of compartments and sales pitches um, I can buy these, but they only have them in 120s, and these are all 80, 40, or 60s randomly. So, um, another thing that I purchased was the wonderful people in my Discord channel bought me that Ender, what is it, V3, V2? Is that it? 3V2? It's right there. Um, and I have been dabbling in the old 3D printing world, and... Over the course of several days, several screw-ups, and learning about temperatures and filaments and magic, leveling and science, I printed myself this. This is a, sorry if I'm eating the mic, a mini Amiga 3000 case that has a Pi 4 inside with a expansion board right that gives you 3.5 millimeter audio two full-sized uh hdmis an internal usb i have a fan thingy and just some heat sinks i tossed in there it has a ribbon cable for the sd card here that kind of does some magic to allow you to have a front uh 
SD card. It also has lights, LED lights. I haven't finished hooking those up. And it has an OLED screen that says PyMiga and shows the boot process, Amaberry. Um, by default, PyMiga 2, if you have an OLED screen, does come preloaded with the stats.py or Python script. That, that allows you to uh, get some display of temperature, disk usage, stuff like that. Best fans available. Noctua makes the best stuff. Yes. Okay, great. That's cool. So while I was doing that case, that leads me to this. I needed a LED light. One. So I saw order for one LED light. Well, this isn't all of them. So I ordered one LED light and I got 10 packs of 100. It was one 10 pack of 100. So I got green. I got yellow, I got a multi-color pack, I only got a hundred of these, these are blue, white, yellow, orange, red, green, and clear, and a bunch of the resistors. So that was just for that. The reason I did green and yellow was because as you can see, maybe not, I don't know, that is what the Amiga 3000's original um, LED lights are. And you can't find those LED lights anymore. The original ones, you can. Um, can you run dual monitors with PyMiga? With PyMiga 2? No. Um, the original Commodore Amiga stuff, even in a RTG scenario like the 4000 or, or the Vampire, or any real Amiga RTG setup, you're going to have two modes. So in theory, you'll have a dual screen. But can you run them both simultaneously like a modern computer? No. We did fix the issue with the rainbow screen magically. I didn't fix it. It just fixed itself. I think it was with uh, the Debian version we put on. You can use either port at power on now. Normally, it was uh, the original port was the port closest to power on the Pi 4 or micro SD on the 400. And now that is apparently everyone's telling me it doesn't matter what port you're plugged into. I still use the regular ports because that's how I've been trained. That's LED lights. Where did I put them? Oh, they're right here. Sorry. Trying to keep as organized as possible. My room was totally trashed from several projects I was working on. And I had to hurry up until midnight last night and, and try to make this presentation table again. My wife had her Christmas village crap on it. And um, all I asked for was socks. You got the bonus planned. Now, um, what is this? Oh. This is to answer a question from another user that posted on the Facebooker group. I'm going to impale myself on that. That, uh, hey Lou, how are you, buddy? Haven't seen or talked to you in a long time. Did get your uh, chat thing about 1.30 in the morning. I was sleeping. I apologize. But thanks for watching. So, a um, couple of people have been talking about the Raspberry Pi W's and the zero two w's the new ones and that they can't find them so there's a store called micro center microcenter.com they have a web site but a lot of times in their stores um i live in pennsylvania so i have to drive to the state below me which is called maryland and in a, a city down there they have a micro center it's about 80 miles from me so i take a trip and i get a list and i don't get a basket i only will get what i can carry that way i don't buy too much um, but at the end of the aisle, bin, whatever you call them, outside of the U.S., they had, like, stacks of these things, like, in a, in a container, just piled up. Limit two per customer. So I got one of each. This is the Raspberry Pi uh, 02W and the original 0W. So they're still available. I paid $6.99 for this and 15 I think, for the two. I don't know what their real pricing is supposed to be or inflation or... Reganomics or whatever you want to call it. I don't know, but they're still available. The original question was the 02W, is it a possible replacement for a Pi Storm uh, like the Amiga 1000? I don't know. The 3A, I think, is more powerful than this, but there are some new cores for the Pi Storm, not Pi Amiga, Pi Storm for EMU68 emulation that I'm going to be uh, going into dabbling my fingers in that also. 
Mislav, holy moly, thanks, brother. That what is that? Uh, HRK. What is an HRK? Krona. Cr uh, I don't know, right? Krona. Krona. Well, thank you. I appreciate it greatly. Back in the day, Shane Bro. Back in the day, it would be awesome to have my scene at BBS on one screen and the whatever on the other screen. You can do that, but not at the same time. Remember Amiga RTG? I'm sorry. I got like, uh, what did somebody call me? 10 Second Tom? I'm like Dory. Oh, a butterfly. You can do the RTG screens. Like on an Amiga, you have a promoted screen and your regular screen, but none were simultaneous. It was either one or the other, so you would have to toggle back to see your CNET. Now, you can run CNET. On Pymega 2, 1, 5, you can run them. I mean, 2 has Term already built in. Telser device, a.k.a. the Telnet daemon, is already set up. You can run a BBS. There's Zeus BBS on there already if you wanted to play around with that. It's in the Programs folder or Internet folder. Um, but, yeah, you can Term out. For those of you who use Pymega, didn't watch the video, didn't care, didn't read, you can use Term and Telnet into BBSs currently running, including my own and several others that I've included in the address book of Term on Pymega 2, 3, well, 3's not, uh, uh, 1, 5, or 2, mainly 2, yeah. I'm very impressed with all the machines, Chris. They look great. Hey, thank you. I spent a lot of money. Well, you know, I didn't really spend it. I charged it. I'll be paying on it the rest of my life. Uh, there's more... But the camera's kind of in the perfect fixed position. I got the table level. I even got the camera level. I'm usually crooked for speed. I lined it up with the top of the crooked shelf, which I lined with a laser crooked. Kelly, I don't remember if this was mentioned in the past video or not. Is the Amiga LED display on your wall available to purchase somewhere? Yes, and I'll go into that too. We'll cover that right now. There is a store on Etsy. In a previous video, I mentioned it. It is etsy.com slash shop slash LED retro. And I can message the person right now. His name is Jason. He's a wonderful person. Wonderful person. I've met him personally. I was going to do a tour of his uh, basement area where he has the shop set up. He has a pick and place machine and he designed these boards. These are not junk these are hard printed circuit boards if you haven't seen the video after the stream please go back and watch this it's awesome you can run dual screens on pi mega 2.0 i run dual screens on a pi 400 yeah but the emulation is not dual screen ready if you can that's great maybe i'll play around with that um i'm out of room uh yeah kelly they are top quality uh so jason Made all these board designs. I'm sorry I get off topic. 10 second time, remember? Um, so these are turned so down for the camera. You think that this looks bright. Like if I turn an overhead off, the camera kind of gets focus fuzzy on these. So you can see how the Commodore Chicken Lips logo is fuzzy. This is barely on. Watch this. I'm going to squish down the floor here. And I'm going to turn this one up just a hair. Oh, that's the wrong one. Eh. Eh, let's see. This one. Watch this. So that's turned up. Look how freaking crazy bright that is. So I keep them all the way down when I'm filming because it's just uh, the cameras can't focus on them. And I am poor. Well, I'm not poor. I am burdened from my hobby that I don't have a good camera. I have a, uh, this is what I have. So my YouTube videos are filmed on the awesome Canon Vic, V-I-X-I-A, Vixia, HRF 800 HD. Ha ha he. I broke the power adapter, so I have to do some magic with gravity and a cord to get it to charge. But it works, and that's what I make my videos with. I also have a GoPro for my travels. That's uh, right here. This is a GoPro 6 Silver. It's a real piece of junk. And when it works, it's great. Most of the time, it doesn't. Pi Mega 2, display crappy image on Pi 400 Full HD sound glitches in every game, every idea. Yes, that was addressed the day after it came out. My apologies. There's fixes listed in the description. Also on our Discord channel. It's a simple 
F12 config, slide the old audio buffer down to min or one, go back to config, hit save, reboot, and enjoy. The display on crappy image is probably because you're plugged into a 4K television. There's also fixes for that in the description and also on our Discord channel. Feel free to jump on. One of us will help you out right away. Yep, as Mr. Darren said, um, anything else? Perspective, this perspective is the best for the show. Hey, Lou, what do you think? I'm trying to get more stuff. Uh, if you can't see the Pixu, what the hell is it called? The bigger one? I have the little one. Oh, I forgot to turn it on, but my fat head's in the way. So you're probably not going to see that one either. Why don't I do this? These have like a nine hour battery, so I could put this right there. Is that going to display stuff? It's displaying Bluetooth. There we go. So this is also a Bluetooth speaker. Very loud. All right, let's continue with stuff. Um, this is from Bargain. What? I'm not going to butcher your name. Mr. Bar Gaines. How about that? In Hermitage, Tennessee. This may be something I ordered. I don't know. Whoop, whoop. Klingon Blade of Death. Trash can is missing in action. Inside we have a USPS envelope. I think I may have ordered this. Inside of this, I run your new Pi Mega image on a Plasma TV 51 inch. It runs like a charm. Chris, good work. Thanks. Fun with Arc O Linux. Yep, I ordered this. My bad. So this was eBay. This is a Chinon FZ. Z? Z? F? How do you say that in F? Do you guys say FZ or FZ? FZ 357. This is a PC, aka Windows DOS drive. High density floppy. What is so significant about an FZ357? The Amiga 3000 has FB, as in B, 357s, and their high density Amiga drives that can spin down to 150 RPM because Commodore, in their ultimate wisdom, couldn't figure out how to do high density, so they just slowed the RPM down to double its density, therefore 1.88 megs versus 1. Point, or 1.76. You know the math, versus 1.44. You can get up to 1.88 out of them. So FZ357, we're going to convert this. This is the uh, Malaysia model, which is the one you can convert to an Amiga high density drive. A FZ357, of course, you can still convert with one little solder blob, JP2, I think it is, J2, that converts it to an Amiga 880K disc. And maybe you can do the... Um, high density on that. I'm going to put this back in its little bubble here because you need floppy drives, Lou. If you need floppies, like actual floppies, Mr. Q from Holden Modify has uh, been my like guinea pig, not guinea pig, but helper of testing my stuff. He needed a floppy drive for his 1200. You can check out that video on his channel. I'll do some Lincoln afterwards. And he uh, took uh, the floppy drive that I sent him and put it in an Amiga 1200. And that's the one I painted for my 2000 over there. No problem. Uh, you have to take the faceplate off to put them in a, a 1200. But that's a PC replacement floppy drive that I converted for Amiga. There's videos on all that stuff. You guys think I make videos for you. I make videos so I don't forget what I'm doing. We would love to see a video on PC floppy conversion. Rewind the old channel. Did you know I'm almost at 280 videos? I think this is number 280. This stream will be 280. Crazy. It's pronounced Z. Z when you're aged three. Well, here in America, where Jesus lives, we say Z. Because it's only one letter. It's not three. That's the correct way to do it. So, yeah, it's, uh, yep. But I'll, I'll, I'll humble you, and it's Zed. So I have a... Okay. A Zed, a Zero... How would you say Zero? Zero? Okay. 
I have a Zero W black case. I think I picked this up with the Raspberry Pi Ws. Yep, never gonna use it. If you need it, let me know. So these packages are from one of my good friends. What's this? And this, I missed one of these on my last live stream. And Jonathan, I apologize that I forgot to share this. So we're gonna start with this one. Mr. True on Discord, and I have been talking, and he sent me this. Did I show this? I don't remember. This is from Dackberry. It is called the Dackberry 400. I wrote myself a note so I wouldn't forget. 10 second time. True on Discord sent this. I have this on my 400, but not right now. This plugs into the GPIO header to replace the piece of crap DAC that is built into the Raspberry Pi, which gives you such wonderful sound emulation. 3.5 mil out. Boop. There's a little software piece you have to download from this website. You just do a git pull from the Linux command line and it pulls the sound down and then it's available in also mixer. Now I have since upgraded my operating system to Debian 11, whatever the next one is not Buster, but the, the new one, that one. And, uh, that I haven't tested it with yet. I had some configuration driver issues with this card originally, but I did get it sorted on Pimega 1.5, um, 2.0, and I rolled it back through 1.5, re-downloaded it, and it worked. So you can get 3.5 mil out of a Pi 400 with this thing. It plugs right into the back on the GPIO header, and you have a 3.5 mil out. Now, my monitor is a Dell U2410F. It has a 3.5 out on the monitor. So I just plug my speakers into the monitor, and then any input that it magically has, which is everything. This is a 15 kilohertz compatible Amiga monitor also, but I use it for everything. Um, it'll display the audio or take, show the, blah, play the audio out of anything that it, it has inputted to it. All right, so uh, big box, I'm gonna save this says, do not bend or crease. And this says, from Daryl Mays, but I know this is Jonathan. It doesn't have the normal branding of my stuff, and I like to try to cover my address, but oh well. Um, let's go for it. I'm feeling for stuff in case I chop it in half. Okay, I'll be nice. Ooh, I came so close. <laughs> I got it a little bit. Whoops. No, this is not from John. I'm sorry. This is from Daryl. Hi, Chris. This is a 512K expansion module for your Amiga that we are remaking. Do you think you could test this and let us know how it works? Okay. Well, that's a tiny one. That's what she said. This. Oh, wow. Look at that. And I just put a fingerprint on it. This is an A501 512K expansion for the Amiga 500. This side down. That's cool because, yep, that's going to come in handy in a couple minutes. I'll tell you why. Folder bender crush, and I just freaking I almost sliced it right out of the park there. Cool, so yes, I will test that out, Mr. Daryl, and I will do a video on it and we will get it all sorted. Enigma after after bib after bib. Good morning, David Z. How is life in warm Arizona? We got nine inches of snow the other day, and uh. It's like eight degrees Fahrenheit out. What's that, like negative 90 or something in the old Santa Hizzle? This is from Jonathan. Even though it says Mr. Kevin, but I know it's from Jonathan. I'm gonna try not to cut myself. Love this knife. There's paper in there. I always slice the paper. 
Afternoon. What do we got? Oh. Oh. We got a board. Thanks for shopping with KM Tech. Discounts on massive stuff. Okay. Uh. Oh, some assembly required. This is a KM Tech AMA CD32 controller board. Oh, like that. Um, you need some resistors, some dip sockets, some capacitors, all which I have in stock. I might not have the 74LS165. and one, I do have a 125. And some buttons. And uh, you solder this together. And you get a CD32 controller. Isn't that cool? Now it's just the board thing. I guess I could 3D print a case for it on the old... Uh, that thing? Ender? Thank you so much. You know that's going to come in handy because I love that CD32. I have it hooked up to my big TV over there. And I've been playing the crap out of it. And like, it was just an Amiga. Yeah, but I have been testing backups on CD-ROM on it that I have been testing from the internet. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, load times are slow and it's a 1X CD-ROM, but it's a console and it's cool. I'm thirsty. I'm going to knock that over. Next is... Oops. I just got this yesterday. I'm going to do this one. This is me. Oh! This is from PrintedSolid.com. This is the... Uh, should be... Damn, that's... Nice. This is the Jesse PLA. If you don't know what the Jesse PLA is, it's a... Uh, it's hard to print with, but thanks to David Z, the print master, he's like the Yoda of 3D printing to me. Comes vacuum sealed in this hermetically airtight with some dye, what is that called? Desiccant in there? I got two of them. They are Amiga 500 colored um, prints, and that's what I printed the Amiga 3000 Mini with. And among other things, I sent a couple packages out recently to others that I printed. Not like I'm great at printing at all, but, you know, I'm dabbling. And, uh, sent those out. That stuff's hold and modify. Everyone's favorite uncle. Look at all those sexy gals behind you. Thank you for all you do, Chris. Thank you so much. If you guys don't know who hold and modify is, check out his channel. He taught me a lot about Lightwave. And I never actually had an interest in Lightwave because I'm stupid. And it had all these buttons that I had no idea how to use it. And I would just click things and sometimes things would happen. But most of the time I would screw it up and it would crash. So one day I was on the old YouTube sitting on my couch when I wasn't on eBay or farting around with these things that I uh, saw a tutorial from him. And I've known him for a while on the old Facebook groups about Lightwave. And I figured, you know what? I'm actually going to watch this and learn. So I did exactly what he did, and it worked. Like, I learned Lightwave. And I have sent him pictures of things that I've rendered and made, like, flying animations from the Babylon 5 spaceship that's included with it. It's on Pi Mega 2 or 1.5. You got to do some weird Mob Pro stuff that we figured out. But that's, uh, that's helped me out a lot. And I actually enjoy Lightwave now. And if you look at his animation on his channel, like his welcome message where it says hold and modify, that's done on Lightwave with the Amiga insertion disc. I would do that myself, but it would probably take 3.5 years to render on these 25 megahertz guys. Well, the 080, aka 080 Vampire 2000 is pretty quick. It's been running Frontier, like the 3000, for probably over an hour now. Um, good job, by the way. I'll try the TV service CMCA thing. Okay. That just shows you what resolution you're in. 
if you're on a 4K TV on Pi Mega 2 and you boot it up and you get like nothing, um, you can SSH Telnet into the device, edit your config text, and hash out that one line that kind of boots you into what's called VGA safe mode. Now please remember when you do that, you still got to run the Raspi config and set your mode because, and then comment back in that line because that's an emergency mode, kind of like a 3.9 boot disk. You can get in, but it's not really your, your workbench. So I'm saving this one for next. This is a gift for you from 42 DDT. And it was a box that I opened and then didn't realize it was a gift. I thought I ordered it. <laughs> it says, it says Big Shart. 30th of November, 2021. Big Shart. Is that your name or is that me? I'm a Big Shart. Sometimes. No. Oh, yeah. This is a Meanwell power supply. 65 watt. It's an RT65B. Well, what's great? I'm getting fingerprints all over it. Uh, what does it do? Well, it gives you a 5 volt and a 12 volt so you can uh, build new Amiga power supplies inside your Commodore case. I have one in the drawer down here, the original uh, Amiga 500 bone brick one. And I'm going to be doing that. So modern power supply in the original case. Safety, you know, I could... Re mine's been recapped, so... Uh, so thank you 42 DDT. I will do that and it's greatly appreciated. Um, this thing, this is me. This is going right in the garbage. What is it? This is an aluminum extruder head thingy, spring and duhicular gear for the Endo 3 V2. And I can't use it. Why can't you use it? Because I spent the entire time with those little Allen wrenches greasy, slipping out of my hands, dropped them 800 times, and you put this dude on the top. And inside of that, you screw in your thingy that holds the plastic crap. There's no threads in here. They didn't thread it, so I can't insert it to have the... It doesn't work. So I'm going to keep the gear and the little clip and the spring. I don't know why. But, yeah, this is all trash. 1099 micro center run my bad that yeah it's only 65 watts though hold and modify it's not going to do any good you have a 230 watt in the 3000 originally you can buy them larger uh they're a really small compact power supply if you do do that you're going to need a 3d printed uh, rear cover for the fan area on the back you know same if you put an atx power supply in there Jeff Jones, CD32, before Terrible Fire, $50, after Terrible Fire, $300. Not necessarily. Jonathan, it's a standalone unit. Okay. Um, catching back through comments. I'm sorry. Great job, by the way. Uh, I wonder the CD32 USB needed permission to work on actual CD32 systems. Yeah. CD32 USB controllers, right? Because it's a DB9, you know, Amiga type. I made the mistake one time of saying serial because it was a DB9. Y'all jumped on me for that. Yeah, it's called microwave hold and modify. Microwave, that's it. Are you planning on getting Lightwave a modern for modern platforms such as Mac OS or Windows? No. I am not. It's always 1994 down in my basement. Uh, except if I step behind the third wall right there and play PlayStation 5 or watch YouTube on the old 4K small television or play PlayStation 4, VR, whatever. I do have newer things. I have a MacBook from 2012. It's pretty new, right? Don't throw that out. Get the extruder. It's 10 bucks. What's the pick on the wall? Star Trek just nosy. That one... <laughs> That is uh, Burt Reynolds and the truck driver dude from Smoking the Bandit, where Burt Reynolds is sitting at the helm of the Enterprise, and his buddy, the truck driver, and the they have the Firebird logo from the Smoking the Bandit Trans Am on the Enterprise. That's over there in the corner. That's barely visible. Uh, the game that's loading in continuous loop on uh, the 3000 and the 
2000, I'll tilt this chair, I'm sorry, is, uh, yeah, Frontier Elite 2. People like to run that to show how fast their regular Amigas are. I just uh, did it to, uh, you know, not have the workman screen just sitting there. Let it do something for once. I uh, usually listen to CDs on that. I throw the Christmas Christian music in there, the old Slayer. Get the Christian, Christian music going. And then uh, 4,000 I usually listen to music mods on while I'm doing repairs. 3,000 I use for everything. That's got the RA SCSI. That thing is awesome. I have now, I know i got to shoot some more, edit some more videos. The uh, Macintosh stuff on there so I can do the Mac partitions native. It's freaking really cool. But I gotta have SCSI. If it was USB, pure USB SCSI emulation, that would be awesome. But it's really neat. Hold and modify, use his light, light wave as his day job. So yes. Huh. Well, that's cheating because you already know about it. But thank you for for uh, doing those videos, Kevin. I'm calling you out by name. I'm going to adjust myself 847 more times. Apologies in advance. What is the black TV... In the front one doing it seems an animation of some sort with a clock oh this is a divoom now uh, they have weird names divoom d-i-v-o-o-m dot com this is a tv because it looks like a tv right it is a bluetooth speaker pixel art micro sd awesome dude thing that i loaded up full of commodore animations on their app and you can switch channels here whoops like a clock and internet-based things, which is a random assortment of whatever it pulls off the internet. A voice-controlled face thing, so that when you talk with the microphone thing, it will karaoke-wise and do things. And I just do logos of animations for Commodore. There's one up here behind the old monitor that uh, Kirk and Spock are constantly nodding their heads. So that's the bigger one. That's uh, This is a 16 by 16 pixel art display, full RGB. That is a 30... 2x32, and they even sell 128 by 128 which I thought I bought, but I didn't. John Dawson, what is the best RGB adapter card for an Amiga 2500 so I can display my workbench and games to today's LED monitors? Well, I'll tell you what. There are videos. There are, uh, for myself, Tenmark, many others, Jan Beta. They did uh, the RGB to HDMI. It uses a Raspberry Pi, W, Zero, if you can find one, uh, on a small PCB board that goes in the Amiga 2000 slot, right? Video slot. Gives you an HDMI out. Promotes all of your video to HDMI. Hook it up to anything you want. Modern television. Um, if you wanted to go the old school route, if you can find one, I have a microwave, not microwave, microwave flicker fixer AGA 2000. It's not AGA, it's just its product name. That would be called a scan doubler, and that would allow you to promote the 15 kilohertz native screams, does some math times two, 31 shoots out the back. That's what's on the VGA monitor that's currently connected to the 2000 right there doing the Frontier loop. I run Frontier just like Jesus did. That's right, Jeff. RGB to HDMI adapter. Yep. Drum roll for Big Brown Box. Your 3000, my favorite Amiga. That is my favorite Amiga. I like the early model A1000 too. That's the Pi Storm. Since I got the Pi Storm, that's been used more times than it's probably been used in its own life on its original Kickstart Workbench 1. Point what the heck ever. I've been using that a lot. I played Dread on it. That's a 512K chip RAM uh, thing. Thanks to Kevin Schwartz. Yep. Where can we get one? E-booger. I buy all my stuff off e-booger. Which leads me to this. I'm going to... Do I have anything here? All right, I'm going to slide this over for just a tickle. We're going to open this. This is from 2 Pimigo World Headquarters. From Alan Marks. Courtesy... I'm sorry, I'm picking my eye. That's gross. Of Jonathan. This is uh, Alan Marks makes, resells all the terrible fire products and that's where I purchased my TF-1230 for and yesterday I posted a 
a video of Stephen Leary. Man, they taped the crap out of this. Uh, did a year-end update. That's Terrible Fire himself. Boy, what a nice collection he's got. His basement is like 10 times the size of mine. Didn't he like Sweden or something like that? I got tape on here. But yeah, he did a video and they showed the 4060. Oh, that is the Terrible Fire 060 for the with 256 megs of RAM for the Amiga 3 and 4000. I am getting one of those. So this is from Jonathan in the United Kingdom of... I got bubble wrap. Thank you. This is a 8 gigabyte compact flash card. And oh, I was just talking about free Chucky Gang. A TF three thirty. Is this for the CD thirty two? This is an O thirty. It had an eight megger in there, which worked fine, but an O thirty number two hundred ninety eight. This is not compatible with analogic riser. I don't have that. Wow, wow, dude! Holy crap! I owe you some money. You're going to get a special present. Something real nice, Clark. Man, that is incredible. Thank you so much. I use everything. It's not like I'm a major YouTuber and I get gifts and I don't do nothing with them. Look around. I use everything. I relearn it. Do videos to teach others how not to do things the way I do. Thank you. So much for this. This is freaking awesome. We're going to be doing an updated video on the CD32. It's over there. Before I get to the big box here, I know what's in this. This is from Michael in... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Washington State. This is not a gift. It is. Sort of. Not really. This is a uh, terrible fire Scottish. Well, okay then. Sorry, I was going to do a Scottish impression, but I would just totally butcher it. Alan Marks is a dude. I did say he was a dude, yeah. Or did I miss that? I don't know. Yeah, Alan's a dude. Uh, Alan helped me get my TF-1260. Yep. Terrible Fire Scottish. Uh, Scotland. Scotland. TF-330. CD-32. I mean, that's just freaking kick butt. O thirty 30 plus 64 megs of memory on board. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, my my that CD32 is going to be equivalent of my of my 1200. That's a TF1230, 64 megs of RAM, and four gig compact flash. So this is eight. So my CD32 and a CD drive. So my CD32 is going to be superior to this minus a GoTech, but we can hook that up because it's got that board thing in the back. It's going to be awesome. I I thank you so much. It's going to be badass. He doesn't just use it, he fixes it. Yeah, I do. I fix a lot of stuff, and that's in here too. So, backstory. About a month ago, because I thought I was going to, um, you know, be on time with videos. Backstory is, a while ago I did a video where uh, the People's Republic of China, the CCP, reached out and said, Hey, we would like to sponsor you to do a project video on something. Okay, I said, what do you need? It takes a while to get sponsorships done, working out payment. I didn't make a dime, okay? I made store credit. So PCB Way said, I will pay you 300 US credits. That's what they said. I have the emails. I'm like, you mean dollars? No. Credits on our site to do a video on whatever. And I was doing the video anyway, so I said, okay, this video is sponsored by PCB Way, blah, 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 blah. They tell you what to say. It's all propaganda. So every time you see a PCB Way video, I use them, and we'll go into that. So on our Discord channel, we talk a lot about not just Amiga, but real Amigas, Commodore stuff all over the place. And uh, one of my friends has a, an Amiga 1000 that does not have a, a front 256K chip RAM adapter, the A1050. And he found the... Gerber files from a project from a dude named Tom and I figured you know what let's do this I have all this PCB way store credit sitting here that I'm never going to use 
I'm going to have these made and then I'm going to give you one and then I'm going to give the rest away. Cool, right? That's awesome. So we did that. Had the had the uh, Gerber files magic done. A um, couple people helped get them to S7 format, C something format. Adobe, I don't get out of there. Oh, man. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, no, people from Pueblo China. So the the catch with these are this. So they they sent me some stickers, right? With and they want to sponsor me on this. So PCB Way said we'll sponsor you on your project video that you used the money we credited you for your sponsor video. We're going to sponsor you for that. I'm like, well, do I get credit for that? No. So I don't know. So anyway, these boards were made at PCB Way. This is an Amiga A1050 knockoff board by Tom. This is not mine. I did upload this to PCB Way Shared Projects with full credit to the creator. I said, this is not mine. I linked to his website, everything. I don't know why he didn't do it. This is a socketed 64KX4 chips. You need them in 150 milliseconds. So we ordered the RAM, right? This is the RAM that Mr. Staney sent me to put in the board that I already sent him. Yeah, we got crossed, but it came from China. So this was ordered in like November and you know, it takes a while to get stuff from over there, especially small crap that's fake. These are useless. They're like A, 100 nanosecond, 80 nanosecond, there's a random assortment of different chips in here. And when you take a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol or that other chemical, acetone, and wipe it, the whole top of the chip comes off. And it's been sanded and re-inked, and they're fake. The only problem with this is I ordered from the same person and had the same problem because I had the same writing, which I contacted eBay about, and they quickly refunded the money to both of us, hopefully. So... How did I test these? I can't. I can put this in the board. I can put this in my Amiga 1000 and it fires up. Circuit design is fine because if it wasn't fine, the Amiga wouldn't boot. Now it still will not show the right RAM because of course there's nothing populated in here and it won't, you know, won't go past the 256K that the Amiga 1000 originally has. So the circuit design works. Finding the correct RAM is A, expensive, B, Hard to find trustworthy. So I have ordered the 120s, which I can find everywhere. I've ordered hundreds, 80s, 60s. It's too fast for, I mean, this is a 1985 computer. It's 150. So we found some 120s from a reputable source that are NOS in a tube. We're going to try those. That's the next step. They're supposed to be in today. I thought I was going to have them today. But when this gets sorted, when we can find the RAM, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Stanny has the fifth one. These are available for whoever needs them. I don't care about cost. I will ship them to you as long as you're not in, like, Western Isles of, of New Zealand and it's going to cost me $700 to ship. As long as it's reasonable, I will ship these to you wherever you're at. If you need them, when we get them working, don't flood me with emails or texts right now. Like, hey, I need what I want. That's fine. I have no problem with sharing the wealth. I got that sponsorship for free. I'm just going to return it back into the community like I always do. So, yeah. You had a fake 6882 FPU from China. Hey, guess what? Me too. But I got it from Amiga Kit, but they quickly replaced it. They didn't know it was bad. They ordered a batch. I ordered a card with a Amiga 1200 FPU 40 megahertz thing. Did a video a while ago. Didn't work. I contacted them. Took a couple days. They were busy, as usual. And uh, they said, okay, with your next order, we'll ship you your replacement. Why well, order all the time? I said, I need this, 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 this. And boom, I FedEx two day my stuff from Amiga Kit. It's a little bit more expensive in shipping, but I don't have to wait a month. And FedEx has some kind of magic 
drug lord deal with customs here. It just gets right through. I don't know. It just shows up two days I get my stuff from Amiga Kit. Come to Autumn. It, I thought you were joking when you said the People's Republic of China. No. What's their salute? I don't, I don't want to do a, something. Darren, small crap that's fake. Everyone, take a moment to take in all the showing the Amiga's behind him. That's so cool. Yeah. Had one blow up in a puff of smoke. Linus Tech has a collection of China Tech shopping stores. Yeah, that's uh, like AliExpress or whatever it is. They're a big, uh, you know, problem uh, fakery. So our final box on mail time before we get into Pymega 3.0. And I'll scoot this table out of the way, not chop my head off. This is a box of paper. It's light. And I know what's in here. But I haven't opened it yet. And then we're going to just, whoops, slice the box around the perimeter. Whoops. Okay, that should do it. Clean the tape off this knife. I've been using it. I've used this knife for mail time more than I've ever used it in my life. Oh, man, did I not get it all? All right, yeah. We got paper. So this is paper from the Northwest. No. Inside the bag. What's in the bag, man? We got weed. No. These are two eighty-three seventy-five. Oh, sorry, eighty-three seventy-two A Agnes chips. One meg Agnes chips for the Amiga five hundred. 2000 series 3000 if you can mod it not to have or if you only want one mega chip or I mean use this this R should be okay these are for repair contacted these are this is a GVP uh, 2000 HC8 SCSI controller. Look, it's got a two-year warranty. Uh, it doesn't work. Something's wrong with it. it. Needs to be tested and dissected and checked. And I believe this is another one also. Same thing. Ooh, this one's got a lot of flex. HC8 uh, Series 2, Rev 2. It is a 8 meg uh, single SIM socket SCSI controller for the Amiga 2000, 3000, 4000. You can fit them in anything. 25 uh, pin out the back. Two year warranty from GVP. I wonder if I can call that in. GVP doesn't exist. I was going to do a road trip out to GVP because I live in Pennsylvania, as you've seen in my previous videos. Every once in a couple years, I take a trip out to Commodore, Westchester. And uh, oh, there's something else in there. And uh, do a video on, you know, what was MOS Technologies, MOS Technologies, whatever. Final in this box is more paper. I'm gonna wrap a wrap a fish up in it. You can go to Shenzhou, and if you're willing to order a lot of thousand, they'll build you an Android tablet. Spec your desire. I don't like Android. Is this taped in here? This is an Amiga 500 motherboard that is in for repair. <laughs> With all Moss original chips. 8370 Agnes. Wow. Original OCS Paula. Doesn't have a Motorola branded CPU. It's the Seiko one, the SCN 68,000, 512K of RAM. They're soft. What happened there? They're like really soft. I feel like I got powder on them. Uh, this is the 500. It's not a 500 plus, so it doesn't have battery damage, but it's going to need new caps. Blue showies everywhere. They're great capacitors. Uh, one Rubicon, two, three, four, five. Somebody's been in here. Five new Rubicon caps. But all the light blues are the showies, and uh, this has an issue where it won't post any video, and it won't do anything. Just black screen. Nothing happens. So we're going to dive into that one. 
Um, that's why the Agnes's are here. In case it's the Agnes, or I have Denise's, I have Gary's, I have, well, let's not have Gary, Paula, even an odd CIA's. All those are in stock in row B over in the shopping center, next door in the basement room. So we're going to do a video on that real soon and get that sorted out. God. Sorry. My chair wheel stick. Everybody's like, why are you always adjusting yourself in videos? Number one, I'm fat and I get uncomfortable. Number two, this chair squeaks like it's farting all the time. And it's like, I must have not put the seat on the pole correctly because it wobbles like a crackhead. All right, so I'm going to turn the audio on for a moment. We'll see what the 4000's doing, if it's still running and it didn't lock up. That's Frontier. That is the 4000 playing music mods, ever so lightly. I'll turn it up just a tickle. I'm gonna move the table, show off my Christmas pajamas, and then I'm gonna slide the old camera in and we're gonna check out Pymega 3. Pre-alpha, don't get too excited. So bear with me a second. That's a great hat, isn't it? Everybody gets pissed off me for that thing. Alright. Enough. Now I'm running over the USB cables. Hang on. Crap. Wait. I don't want to run over the cables for the camera. Let me move all them. I'm high tech here. Whoops. I'm high tech here and we got it all sorted out. Wobble like a crackhead. All right, just barely started Pi Omega 2. FM Lazar, don't worry. This is not for release yet. Why? Because I start every uh, new release for the next year. I'm gonna shut the other Amigas off if y'all don't mind. Hachu. Because it's loud, and this will help with ambient volume and the heat in my room. Because it gets hot when you got three big box Amigas cracking on like mad. So, what do we got? You're going to notice that there's a Christmas tree with snow on the screen. You missed the Lux paint too. I always thought he was like Rachel Maddow who only dresses from the waist up. Nope, I always wear pajamas. That's kind of my thing. Um, I know people get mad at me about this hat. It does say Amiga. I'm not into the politics game. I saw that hat long ago on someone else, and I had them made. And I have several of them. If you really want one, reach out to a brother. Don't wear it outside. There's a problem with people that beat people up. For that, what are you doing not on Amiga stuff? Get, sir, mm -hmm. there we go. All right. All right, so let me see if I can get this just the best look. Voltron, you're gonna have to watch yourself now. Dang it. There's never enough room in here. I did replace the battery in the uh, Omnibot. So, what do we got? Do we have sound? Turn up sound. Now, please keep in mind, this is pre-alpha. You're going to see an icon down here that says Firefox. This difference is that PyMega 3 is going to be developed on what's called SDL. PyMega 2 is just a basic Debian 10 buster 
This is Debian 11, whatever the heck it's called, hot dog, I don't know. And uh, remember, I forget things a lot. I put SDL on it because Debian 11 no longer supports Disp Dispman X. Sorry, I'm eating the mic. I have to back that down a little bit. I get excited. And uh, doesn't support Dispman X before, which is the technology that displays the screen on Pymega 2. So I had to put a X Windows based install of it. And you're like, well, what the heck? That's That's just crap. I'm going to turn it off totally. We're going to turn the power off and we're going to turn it on and watch it boot. It does nothing different than any other Pi or Pi Mega booting process with the, uh, that's my, that thing. That's the other Amiga ball coming on over there. So you're going to see normal Linux stuff. Now this is pre-alpha. We're going to switch this down and tone it up and turn all the the toys and bells and whistles off, right? Now this is, of course, slower boot. You'll see the cursor on the middle of the screen. You're going to see a blip. What that is is X Windows. Oops. Watch. Now the Amiga side will load, or I'm sorry, the Scalo side will load. But what does that mean? That means that you can host run any app that runs on Linux from LibreOffice. Yeah, there's PyMega 2 boot screens in there. Remember, I just copied the image. What's this fancy doohickey thing down here? Why is it blurry? I don't know. Probably got a fingerprint on the lens. This is a... Uh, so it allows me to run host run stuff. So I can run Firefox. Oh, no, I have two cursors. Watch. When the app loads, if the app loads, I've been having weird issues with it. I'm just showing some stuff off. And you got to load. So function F2... So for you guys who are having weird issues real quick, let me uh, quit this. Hey, look, it's XFCE Desktop with Linux. It's real Linux. Now, XFCE is the cheapest of the display window managers in Linux. This is not GNOME. This is just XFCE. It's a very fast Linux distribution. There's Firefox. So here's the problem I'm having. So let's say Pi Omega 3 boots. Normally you won't see this. You don't need to use it. Okay. FM Lazar, you're my first YouTube cast to watch on Windows 11. I have Windows 11 on my other machine. It works pretty good. So, once again, excuse the Pi Mega 2 boot screens. Got some toast here. Now I can run Firefox and it's going to run. It's not the fastest ball of wax, but there's Firefox. It runs through Linux and puts itself on the Amiga side. So I can go to YouTube, I can watch a video, I can play audio, anything Linux can do, Pymega can do better. Nah, it's slow. Remember, this is all pre, you know, two weeks after I just put 2.0, I've started on the other ones all the time. There's my sneak time, Pymega 3 sneak pick, whatever, let's, let's check this one out. So behind the scenes like Jesus did. It'll play just like a regular computer would play it. Audio, full screen, commercials, sound. Meet Suvi, the magical audio. Oh my god, shut up. I can't skip my own daggone ad. Come on. But you get the idea. There we go. You get the idea. I can play YouTube. I can go full screen. I have it muted even though it's myself. YouTube is now in full screen. What does this mean? That means your emulation station computer Pi 400, Pi whatever, can now be your uh, single computer. You can do stuff on the emulated Amiga side. Let's just call it that. You can play uh, demos. Oh, yeah. We'll use iDemo. Chris, iDemo's ugly. It sucks. It looks like doo-doo. Well, thanks to Stainy on the old Discord... Clicking around buttons. Yes. Amiga Kitten Rabbit Hole. It's the same thing. That's what the rabbit hole is. It host runs. You know why? Oh, why is Amikit so similar to what I'm doing? Because we both run Amaberry Emulator by Demetrius, a.k.a. Midwin, who does a phenomenal job at what he's done in the emulator. Is it perfect? No. Is it 
going to be perfect. Never. Is anything perfect? Nope. Where can you post a PyMega2 problem, sick tuna? Discord is the best place to get a hold of us because we're there 24-7, 362. And one of us can answer, and the question will be posted, and we can answer it at a time. Even if we're not instantly there, you'll get an at tag reply. So when you check Discord, you'll find uh, the reply. Email client. Yeah, the same stuff that's on PyMega. Now, look, program-wise, I haven't done diddly yet. I'm just getting the operating system running on the Linux 11 host, XFCE. I got to figure out Wi-Fi, all sorts of stuff. So, whoops. All the programs are here. Everything still works. Internet, mail client, yet another mailer. When I was building this, okay, good. I thought I put my email address in here and forgot to take it out when I was testing this. Good. <laughs> Because when I first set this up, I had my actual account in here, and I was uh, using email on here, and it worked fine. So that's uh, yet another mailer, or yam. There's also mailbx, which is another good one. Come on. It's setting up the mailbox. I'm not waiting for it. But that's another good one. But I just use yet another mailer. And we got remote desktop and all sorts of cool stuff. Well, like, well, that's freaking great, Chris. What is so special about that? It's just freaking PyMega with another daggone, uh, you know, window on it. And I can do that right now. Andy, big hello from Germany. Props, organic German beer. I'm not there yet. It's, uh, what time is it? One o'clock. I can hit him up. So let's see. What is that IP? 1.80. So here's a cool thing. I want to slip you to the fourth wall here. Let's check this out. We're going to do both monitors. There's the camera control we're seeing in a loop. And uh, we're going to go like this. We're going to minimize the old stream here. And we're going to go. Oh, we got Discord. We got all sorts of stuff. We're going to go into the old uh, VNC. Boop. Is this the right address? I don't know. 80? Watch this not work. Oh, whoops. 80? I think that's the IP address. I don't know. Let's see what the IP address is. We're going to sniff the IP address. Sniff. Got all sorts of crap on my screen. <laughs> yep, yeah, 1.80. I didn't turn it on. I forgot about it. All right, we'll see. Properties, 1.80, okay. I forgot to turn it on. I've been building VNC support so you can remote control the emulation. Not, oh shoot, I lost my stream. There, not, uh, the idea is to use VNC to remote into PyMega with graphics. What does that mean? You can use your cell phone to play games you can use your tablet, you can use your computer. As long as this has a network connection, you will be able to remote it in. I didn't turn on VNC. We can do that together. Watch this. Quit. You can run Raspberry config from the uh, XFCE. So it's built in with a little GUI. So you can do all sorts of stuff. Like, oh, I want VNC. Enable. Well, I can't right now because I'm using the display. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this down into a console mode. Whoops. I hit the wrong button. And I'm going to turn VNC on the Raspberry config. And then you can remote control it. No big deal. We're booting again because I am special. Cubicle Nate. PyMega is so awesome. For those of you who don't know Cubicle Nate, he's also on the Discord beta tester team, and he registered PyMega.com, which goes to his blog, which shows about PyMega. Marco, five squigglies. Thank you from the Netherlands. Thank you for PyMega. You know what? And thank you all for the support. Without support, I lose interest because I feel like I'm on my own, and it's nice to know, well, that I'm not alone, and there's so many people that enjoy doing this, using this, and, you know, having fun with it. 
once again, Pi Mega 2 screens showing the uh, stuff. Let's uh, let's quit out of that for a second. I'm moving like keyboards around real quick. I'm trying to get a spot for the chat top laptop. Okay, so we're gonna go F12 quit. We're gonna run Raspberry config and turn on VNC. Whoops. I didn't put the package on there. Yes. 55 megs for that. Wow. Now this is on a small card right now. I'm on a 64, 64 gig. I had an issue where I kept blowing up this card. This is a PNY. It's a turd. Don't use PNY. I have blowed it up, blowed it up. Yeah. Uh, I kept rewriting the image and it would work for a couple times and then it would crash and I'd have all these weird problems and it got worse and worse and worse. Ooh, I'm really eating the mic there. My apologies for loudness. Yeah, so it was really, really, really tough. Oh, come on. So this will fix. There we go. VNC is now enabled. You gonna make me reboot? Good. All right, so we're just going to launch Pimega 3. We're going to move my phone. We're going to move this camera to see both screens. We're going to try VNC again. And we're going to say continue. It is Pi and Pi Mega. Watch this. Ha, he, he, ha, ha. Hey, what's that? That's remote screen, full GUI, Pi Mega with mouse. Is it the fastest mouse in the world? No, it is not. It is not fast at all. And I have two mice. So the red mouse you're seeing right here is the physical mouse on the actual Pi. The black dot is my remote mouse, like if I want to play uh, Eagle Player. Go to Eagle Player, double click. Oh, why is it so ugly? What happened to the audio? Because I'm in VNC. I haven't figured that one out yet. Remember, it's a pre-alpha. It's really ugly. Not good. So... The problem is, is when I have VNC turned on, watch what happens to the audio. Now, for you Pi heads, where is it? Oh my God, my ball. Yeah. Sound buffer size two, stereo 44, nothing. I do push, some people do pull, up to you. Now, when I turn VNC on, watch what happens. It's going to continue to be sucky. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, because I disconnected. My bad. Not on VNC, on. Can you use it? And the audio quality, whoa, sorry, is pretty good. Sorry I was like over blasting you there. So audio quality is a lot better with SDL. Uh, let's check uh, complaints. Everybody's like, well, it doesn't work for me. The demo don't work. All right, let's do, let's first, I was playing around, so I'm going to reboot. Control, left Amiga, right Amiga, which is Control Pi Control on the 400 keyboard and Control Windows Windows on a Windows keyboard or Control Option Option on a Mac keyboard. Remember how I told you I was going to spill that drink? Almost did. All right, so this is a fresh reboot. Let's go into a demo. Now, remember, I have done the audio fixes in advance for, for uh, Pi Amiga that are listed on the Discord server. And I apologize to everybody. I apologize to everybody in the world for screwing up the audio buffer and the display. What happened, Chris? What did you do, you big moron? When Pi Amiga 2, when, let's back the truck up. When Pi Amiga 1.5 came out, the display in Raspi Config was set to CEA mode 16, which is NTSC 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. Pimega itself boots the workbench, Scalos, and the environment into a PAL 50 hertz mode. I'm 50 hertz right now. PAL, just like it was intended to be, well, it was intended to be NTSC, but everybody in the UK and everybody else just used it. So, PAL, like it's supposed to be, and everything was fine. 
Everybody just plugged it in. It preset. It worked. 4K, 2K, your mom. Doesn't matter. Plug it in. It worked. What happened? Well, I had numerous complaints that, hey, there's a line right here. And it doesn't fill my screen. And I have a special monitor. And I want, I want it to be upside down, backwards, and inside out. Okay. So I set Raspy Config for 2.0 to be auto-detect. Auto-detect does exactly that. It auto-detects. Yes, you can do scan lines too. You want me to turn scan lines on? We can do that. It looks dookie. Steve, man, my phone wirelessly streams live streams for my router 20 seconds before my PC hardwired to the same router. Odd. Yeah, I know. I'm watching myself on my cell. Whoa, that didn't sound right. I'm watching my own stream here, right? On the, the broadcaster, and then I have the comments laptop right here whoop so i can answer you guys so i'm watching what's going on and look i haven't even moved the camera yet watch we'll wait for the is this is how long it's going to take to get to me showing the laptop we're just going to watch it live and while i talk some more about stuff so the display technology was set to automatic what does that do let's show you live i'm going to show you a mess up on purpose and we're going to do it together so, quitting. Now, PyMega3 has an XFCE backend, so Raspy Config's Raspy Config. Oops. I'm typing sideways. So, in display options, you would see a resolution, a screen resolution. Since this is an SDL, I don't have that. I have a VNC resolution now. You would basically set a CEA mode on PyMega2 to whatever your resolution is, or you can leave it in auto detect. Auto detect would display the best resolution it could for you, right? And what that meant was if your TV was 4K, the Pi can do 4K. The 30 something year old tribute cannot. So that's that's what happened. People plugged it into their 4K television with their PlayStation 5 and expected it to run like this would run on 4k it will it will run 4k but it's gonna be at 24 hertz and or 30 hertz and screw everything up so half the speed so that way everything's preset sdl is sdl it just it's, it's like lucky charms they're magically delicious and it work hans it might display doesn't mean it's gonna work um, down here, these little lines. What is this magic? This is for my own sanity. This is CPU load, hard drive access, CD access, uh, peripherals, which is two floppy drives. These green guys are your floppy drives. Uh, CD hard drive and HDF. Uh, red is, I don't know, uh, percentage, emulation percentage, and ARM core. Kind of like what the Pi Storm is doing, but more accurate. Sorry. Taking a sip of my tea. And, you know, it's it's early. So this is still early. But let's get into timing. What happened? Did you slow it down? Actually, I slowed it down. Why did you slow it down? Because I'm running a... Where's benchmarks? I'm running a X window session underneath. So I can do the fancy stuff like Firefox and LibreOffice, which I haven't finished yet. And... Just whatever you want. If you wanted to run something on there, you just either go to here and type host dash run Firefox. And what'll happen is it'll load Firefox. Well, probably not now because I did a bunch of crazy crap. There it is. There's Firefox. And it, it, it just magically works. And there it is. I want my Amiga stuff back. Well, there. Get it back. Like, oh, what happened to it? It's there. You can just toggle to it. Where's the toggle? Oh, I'm in the Amiga OS. Hold on. Get Alt tab. Nope, I forgot. So anyway, I'd have to write it again. Write Amiga E host dash run, which works on Pi Amiga 2 right now. Firefox. But you can't run Firefox unless you can find a console version. Any console commands, you can run on PyMega2. There's Firefox. You can see it opened again and Bob's your uncle. Close it when you're done. You're back to Amiga Workbench. That's the game plan. What about the sys speed? Let's go into sysinfo 4.4. 4. 
hey look it looks better uh 6840 6882 didn't do the 6860 yet amaberry won't put them in for me yes does it work on the grease weasel sure does we'll do it in a second i got a grease weasel right here um speed i slowed her down to about thousand mips instead of 1300 so we're at 1100 mips I needed 200 more on the arm side to run the host run stuff. Hope you don't mind a couple megahertz off, but we're still at a million dry stones. I was trying to cap it out at 1,000, 1 million, and 300. Pretty close. 2,000 times faster. Yeah, Pymega 2.0 is faster. Steve, yes, host run is in there. Yeah, it runs on a Raspberry Pi 400 because here's a Raspberry Pi 400. No. This is Pymega 3. It will not be out until Christmas. 2022, but Pymega 2.0 still applies. You're going to see my testing overlay right there. All right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, what would you do? To, uh, it's 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 Pymega as it was, right? 50 hertz, I'm a 60 hertz power supply. What would you do? Da, do. All the cache is on. It's yelling about JIT. Does emulation still work? Nothing changes, guys. Nothing changes. So if I wanted to go into emulation, I want to be a Mac. I want to play whatever. The, what's the game I play? Uh, I forget. Launch Shapeshifter. Click UAE Control. Turn JIT off. Hit start. You have a full-blown 040 Mac. Just like I've done in my videos that no one watches or reads. Let's get a Grease Weasel here. Alright. Need a cable. There we go. Got one. Oh, that's an extension. Let me find a cable for the Grease Weasel. I had one. Where's your Mac? Here it is. So we have a Mac OS. We can run programs. I can play Warcraft 2. That's my go-to. Or whatever you want and play Warcraft 2 and it just... Whoops. Not that. This. And it just works. Is it going to be the fastest? Remember, it's an alpha. I'm not too, uh, let's see, single player. You all about the CD. Humans, watch the little animation. Shores of Lauderon. We've all played this game 300 times. Build four barracks, build a farm. I'm on a Mac, so I'm triple emulating. So it's a Pi running XFCE, running Scalos. At your service. Can you kill this guy? As you wish. We are under attack. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it works. I'm on a Mac and it's 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 working. So Wow. So we're a Mac inside Scalos emulated Amiga inside of XFCE on a Pi. Cool, huh? I have a broken board, Steve. I have a broken board on a beautiful A1200. I was going to put in a Pi case and connect a 1200 keyboard to it, but keywords don't exit anywhere, exist anywhere. Uh, have you checked Amiga on the lake.com? They are in the United States of America, and they have all sorts of stuff. When you're done, uh, turn JIT back on. Let's do the... The Grease Weasel. For those of you who don't know, the Grease Weasel is a floppy emulator that allows you to use real disks. If I can find a cable, I think this is one. I got it. Uh, let's back the truck up here. Yep. Yeah, I got all these daggone long cables. Oops, sorry. So, get my goobers out of the way let me put the well we're just gonna leave these here so real 600 real 1200 this is the infuriating furia tf1230 pi mega um so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say off right you're gonna turn pi mega off this is a grease weasel inside of a case i'll have a video on this soon i don't know what this this is all you do is you hook up your usb and you plug it in to your Pi, in my case, 400. I'm going to use the USB 2 port. Plugging in. The Pi is off. I'm running Ethernet because I haven't got Wi-Fi sorted. Excuse me, Amiga 1200. You can hold this. Turning this on. This will do something. Power blip cycle. Make a noise. That's not the noise. That's that screen coming back on when I turn my monitor on. 
I've got it set to the USB port on the monitor so it comes on when I turn it on and goes off when I turn the monitor off. Steve, if uh, what about um, Amiga Passion? That's another Steve. He uh, replaces and repairs Amiga 1200 motherboards in the United Kingdom. Does a really good job, too. AmigaPassion.co.uk or is that .com over there for you guys? I don't know. Already tried recapping. What's the fault? He does fixed price repairs. I repair crap for free if I have the parts and the ability and the time. Um, the 500 is going to be the next. The two GVP cards. I have a Mac SE 030 coming soon. All right. So, well, what's going on with the grease weasel? Well, I plug a floppy drive in. Nothing happens. Let's well, piece of crap. Don't do nothing. Okay. F12, right? You're going to go to, um, yep, expansions right here. You're going to go to built-in expansions. You're going to drop this down to a disk controller. I have to freaking not be in the emulator. Hold on. Restart. All right. We're going to load the config. We're going to go to expansions, disk controller. It's not showing it. It's not showing it, but I can show you on two. I think I have a weird version of Amaberry on here. December 18th, 4-2. Let's see. You know what? Let's do that. I'll do it 2.0 with you. We'll do a, a real a real one. We'll use my actual 2.0. I think this is it. Let's turn this on, see what we get. If not, it's the car that's in my Mini 3000. Dead board. See, we don't know what's dead on it, though, Steve. What's dead on it? Could be something simple. Something super simple. So this is Pi Mega 2. We're just going back in time for a tickle. Just to uh, show the the grease weasel running on here, I should move these things. I don't have the room. I don't want to. Nope. There we go. I have a rack underneath of my desk. Let me sit on. How about up here? No. Well, maybe. All right. So, expansions. Am I not plugged into the right port? Disk, oops, damn it. Disk controllers. Why is this not coming on? Because oh, I didn't. Ah, I think I have a poo poo cable. There we go. What about now, you booger? I got a boot with it plugged in. It's not, uh,. Figures I want to show something working and it's going to screw up. Oh, now you're going to make a noise. Uh -huh. And it would have worked with three. I was just playing with this the other day. On here. Or was it on here? I forget. I have so many of them. Bud 8. Bless you, Chris. Thank you so much for your hard work. Hey, thank you too for even watching. Thank you all. For just hanging out today. For those of you that don't know and you're just joining late, uh, you can rewind the old video a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, in a bit. And uh, did some mail time opening, some wonderful donations and gifts from this friends to the channel and whatever those. And now we're just doing a sneak peek of Pimega 3, which comes out end of the year. And we're doing a question answer, which was... Does the Grease Weasel work on Pimega? And I'm like, yeah, it does. And then it won't work. <laughs> uh, it's not working today. I apologize. It just won't show up. It's like being a butthole. I swear this works. It normally works. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to get off Pi 4. We're going to use my Mini 3000 because it's the same daggone thing. This is a Pi 4. I need a real keyboard for this, don't I? Yep. HDMI. I want to show you guys this case anyway. 
No, I don't even use Ethernet. Cut that grass full free. All right. This case is my 3D printed Mini Amiga 3000. This has, that needs a keyboard. So, excuse me if I bump the camera. We're going to be using my Micro Connectors green keyboard with strongman keys. It types extremely loud, and I love that. We're just going to go all crazy here and plug this in there. On the screen, check this out when this boots. I can't zoom because I don't have a zoom. So it says Pymega loading. I'm sorry if it's blurry. Let me tag you on in here like that. Start again, my Barry. And when the screen shows up. Shall we play a game? Pymega in the need or what? That's pretty cool. Alright, that's that's freaking great, Chris. What about my question? F twelve. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna say it used to work and now it's not. <laughs> or my grease weasel screwed up. There it is. Okay, Grease Weasel Cure Fraser. Whew. Okay, I have to not be in the emulator running, which means what? I gotta click restart. That loads Amaberry without loading the OS, and that allows me to save the config. I can't make hardware changes to a system that's running. So, disk controller, Cure Fraser. And now we say enabled, and you can do three things. There's replace drive DF0 fast, replace uh, DF1, DF2, DF3. There's also more compatible, which is the one I tend to run. It's slower, and then there's the accurate, but extremely slow. So for S and Gs, I'm going to do the fast one. DFO fast, whatever. I'm going to go back to configurations. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to hit start. See the disc working? I don't know what this disc is. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's bootable. I just grabbed it off the shelf over there. But remember, it's slow, so it's nothing. But will I see it on the screen? When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Now let me scoot this back in. I'm on the crazy webcam. I should get my regular camera out, but it's uh it does say DF0 right here. And yeah, it's a. Uh, can I format it? Yeah, formatting. Look at that. Oh, God. Formatting. Cool. So, yeah, it works. It's just a. Uh, Oh, I didn't hit quick or whatever. whatever. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. But it works. So I want to get back to Pi Mega 3 because that was the teaser that I wanted to show everybody. So Grease Weasels are an option. They're flaky. Are they the greatest thing ever? They're great on a PC. They're great to archive and make real Amiga discs for yourself. Hans, Chris, there's something strange between Pi 400 and 4B. As I mentioned a few months ago on a Pi 400, if I pseudo... Reboot, it don't work. On a Pi 4B, everything works perfect. Uh, that was a Pi 4B on that one. 400, this is 3 2.0, and then 3.0 here. I'll plug it in the USB 3. This is what I wanted to show. Get this big old keyboard out of the way. It's hard to do live stream. It is hard to do. Why? Because you're live. You can't edit out your mistakes. Well, I don't usually anyway. Couple. You can't edit out issues, problems, just Hollywood magic. If it's broke, it's broke. And uh, it ain't going to work. But I don't want to I don't want to falsify you guys or give you bull crap or tell you this and it's not part of it. If it works, I'm going to tell you it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You have two USB floppy drives. I guess they could use them, right? Um, there is a difference. These use real floppy drives. The The Grease Weasel uses a 3.5-inch floppy with a 34-pin ribbon cable that goes to the Grease Weasel board. It is powered by a 5... Uh, it is powered by a 5-volt USB cable. 
from a four pin Berg to the floppy cable. So you need the floppy end to the floppy end that plug in together. I used the power splitter that had the four pin Molex and two four pin Berg connectors for floppies and just put those two together and it works. But on the Pies, you gotta remember only one of them puts out five volts on the USB. I always plug into the wrong one. It's, it's, it's niche market. It's not, it's not perfect. But it's cool on the PC side to archive discs. And I'm sorry if you're seeing this. I'm looking at the wrong dag on screen. Okay, so back to Pimega 3.0. Just pre-alpha. And this speaker, there we go. Oops, crushing that. So I'm turning this because the camera is crooked. My apologies. Lou, it's pretty cool, the Grease Weasel. Yeah, there's the Rob Smith drawbridge, which is actually a USB floppy. It cost me about $25, but it was 50 to ship to the United States. 50 pounds, which was like $3,000 United States money nowadays. No, it was like 70 something dollars US shipping to here for a part that was no bigger than my thumb. Crazy. It's freaking nuts. But I just said hell with it. Didn't realize that I paid that much for shipping until I got the credit card receipt. Whoops. Okay. Um, let me make sure I didn't save my grease weasel on this. I don't know why it wouldn't work before. Okay, it's not there. Not showing up. Okay. I think it was the port I was plugged into. Resume. Um, for those of you, again, having sound buffer problems on Pimega 2. Yeah, that's the latest one. Uh, reduce your sound buffer size over here down to two. Some people have been messing with push or pull. What is the difference between push and pull? Push audio is what I use. It is the emulation of the Paula chip on a single Amiga thread. The greasy weasel hole, that grease, greasy weasel hole. Oh, God, yeah. It's my American accent, Steve. Um, the pull audio is a feature where it creates a separate processor thread to emulate the audio. For me, it doesn't work, at least through this display. It sounds like I'm inside of a tin can. All right. So, I will show you. So, we're going to do Pimega 3, right? We're just going to play Eagle Player. Okay. Let's, I hate this mod, so we're just going to go back to DJ Collins at the top. Clear, no skipping. Okay, leaving this running. F12. We're gonna change this to pull audio. Do nothing with the buffers. I might have to reset to get it to work. Let's see. I do. So we're just gonna say uh, reset. I'm not saving that config because I don't like pull audio. Watch it work today. Oh, I'm sorry, Lou. I love floppies. Real, virtual, Amiga, whatever. So, Pimega 3, I took the sounds off because I got on my nerves. Eagle player again. Oh, it's gonna work today, isn't it? DJ Collins, same thing. It's gonna work. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't know if you can hear it over the microphone. It's got like this behind the scenes, like maybe it's this mod. I don't know. I don't know. It's working. This is still on pull. And it's on pull buffer too. Your results will vary. Hell of it. If it's working, I'm going to save it. I don't know. I go by what is the most popular working opinion on Discord. When we're talking Discord, uh, working on Pimega, and I send this out, I'm like, I need to know what you know is working best for everybody. Because being on one monitor, on one Pi, or two, or three, what's going on? Why is 
why am I having this problem and this person's not? Or why is they ha why are they having a problem? It could be different displays. It could be just just something stupid. So that's why we have a beta tester team. And you know, it's not perfect, guys. I've said it a hundred times. It's emulation. It's pr that was my stomach. I'm sorry. It's pretty close, but it's not perfect. Okay. That's what we're trying to do. We can make it close for everybody. The most comments I hear are hateful. Um, I have a lot of praise in the groups on this chat and a lot of good comments. Uh, a lot have been filtered out on YouTube. Uh, there was a couple serious issues that I'm not going to go into too much on this live stream, but you probably read about them or heard about them. So that's another problem uh, in continuation of this effort. I enjoy this, and I enjoy it greatly. So it's a lot of fun for me to do this for not only myself, but for the community in general. If I can get this Firefox thing ironed out on fresh boots, it's weird. It's weird. I gotta test something else out on it that, you know, not not doing its thing, not not host running right. And it's weird. If I quit, right? If I quit and get back to XFCE and I run Firefox, it's kind of like, what was that browser I had on there that kept crashing I took off? I forget. I don't know. Internet. I put Firefox on there. It's a special version of Firefox. I don't know. Imports from Europe and England have gotten expensive. Yeah. Oh, there's the, now it pops up. Figures. All right. So let's launch PyMega again. PyMega 3 is set for auto start. You won't even see XFCE. But what it means is, if you wanted to copy stuff from the network to the network to your, quote, Pymega drive, grab a USB stick, put it in, the Pi Live. Oh, no, it didn't pop up on the Amiga. Who gives a crap? Quit. There's my 128 gig memory stick. There's my kick partition. This makes life easier. There's my kick. Because it's Linux. There's my file system. I want to copy some. Home, Pi, PyMega, Disks, System, uh, la 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 la, Temp. Oh, look, I got the Lux Pac-Man on there already. Oops, I was going to do that. So here's my, let's go, uh, here's some Coffin stuff. Coffin. Uh, demo. Let's grab a demo from Coffin. Decadence Chaotic. I'm going to copy that here. That's done. Let's leave the USB drive and launch PyMega 3. Is SDL that bad? Oh, Steve, I got more than moaners. I get blatant hate and bodily harm threats. How about that? If that sums it up. Yeah, it got really bad to the point where I almost just shut the whole thing down. And I've done it all the time. And I'm not being like a drama bitch. Whoops, I cost on my own screen. A drama queen. It's just, you know, when you get threats, you don't want to keep going. Uh, so let's go uh, system, temp, decadence, chaotic. Wow, there, let's see if it even runs. I don't know. Just copied it from a thumb drive. Now, I have weird screen modes. So apologies in advance. Never even seen this video before. Came off a thumb drive that I copied. Running. Now hear the poppy audio? Listen, this is pull. Listen to this. Hear that crap? Now watch. I'm quitting this because this gets on my nerves. This is why I don't do pull. Push. Save. I'm going to reset it. We're going to run the same demo. That was what I was talking about with pull and push. Your results may vary. It's an adjustment you have to constantly make. Having an emulated operating system is, op is, is, em is emulated, so you're going to need to make tweaks. It's never going to be perfect. It's not like, you know, the perfect Amiga even exists because they have problems. I have a video coming up, the TF-1230 Amiga 1200 versus Pi Amiga 2. And the TF-1230 can't hang with a tenth of the crap that Pi Amiga can do inaccurately or accurately. So let's do that again. So system... Temp, decadence, chaotic. I am on uh, push audio now. 
Look. Oh, she is still doing it. <laughs> well, see, there's Hollywood magic that doesn't doesn't matter. Or is it just this crappy this crappy demo? I don't know. Push two. You can increase this, but if you increase it, you're increasing the latency, which will give you delay. If you decrease it, you decrease the quality, but increase the timing. So this is what you play with. Give it a tug when you want to show off, right? When it's cold water, whoop, shrinks up a little bit. But you get better latency timing. And I crashed it. <laughs> so this is pre-alpha. I have that excuse for at least nine months. Andy, I'm also wondering about these people throwing threats. Why? It's awesome. The problem is, is people are treating this like, like a real, like that, like, like these. How dare I interfere with their puristic, holier than thou Amiga and create this blasphemous, over bloated turd that no one wants. The point is, is exactly this. If you are old like me and have enough money to live your life and you wanted to piss a lot of money away, here's a thousand dollars, right? This is an NTSC Amiga 1200 that I pieced together myself with that goofy key like the United Kingdom has because it's a UK keyboard. NTSC motherboard, GoTech TF1230, AGA Scan Plus from Steve Clifford at Retro Amiga Amiga, Amiga Passion. Um, uh, yep, Compact Flash, Boot, TF1230 Boot, Custom ROMs, Your Mom. Point is... You can spend thousands of dollars, or you can spend a hundred bucks and maybe 25 quid and get an SD card, a couple hours of your time, and enjoy yourself. Plug a controller in USB. I got myself one of these, the Commodore, the, the C64 Retros. It's, it's noisy. This is supposed to be a recreation of a Competition Pro joystick. I have USB drives in here. Um, but... You know, it's not perfect. Let's see something. Does Pymega 3.0 support hot swap? XFCE, I'm going to F12. We're going to go into input. Normally it doesn't, so we're going to see. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. That's just Pi itself. That's still just the stupid Pi. I still have to reboot. I'm going to make shutdown scripts on the Amiga side. You can still do that. Or, whoops, I said it, Scalo side. Yes, Lou, those people are uh, bung wipers. Um, Steve, yeah, I appreciate that, but we have this thing in the United States called the Second Amendment, and it's really nice. So no worries there, buddy. Lou, that's why I come around and disappear. Yeah, the Pigma rule. Oh, <laughs> Man, I got the wrong glasses on. Pie Mega rules. Thank you very much. Great show, Chris. John Dawson. It's uh, information overload for me. I'm trying to get my 2500 up and running. Go back and watch some of your videos. You know, if you need some help, reach out to a brother. Got the old email address in the About Me comments of my YouTube uh, main main page thing. And I'm sorry if you're seeing the broadcaster going on. You're seeing what I see. But I keep it up for the audio level so I don't overload you with... Uh, stuff there we go oh that's the one we want to see that's the broadcaster cool how long has this been rolling i don't know 11 50 a.m so that's 12 o'clock 142 i'm gonna go till two o'clock this time two hours and that's my promise ever thought about setting a package repository for pymega cmr you know that's a little bit above my brain power at old age of me it's a lot of work just taking the compilations of everything and making it work. People are like, you didn't make Pymega. I didn't make the whole thing, no. I've done more than anybody else has. The original Pymega 1.0 was created by a person named Paul. I can't release his last name because I was asked not to. Uh, Paul C. Okay, 
He went by the name of Rock Hetty. And I was an original follower of Paul way back in the day, 2017, 2018, when this started. So I got on the team at 1.2 P. Paul had a personal family issue and left the entire project cold turkey. Took the, uh, not the Discord, the uh, Patreon, the whole thing, and gone, right? No, I haven't been threatened by people that use weapons. We have weapons in the United States. Hence the Second Amendment for defense. Anyway, I was threatened personally with bodily harm, me and other people in my household, if I did not stop Pymega 2.0. True shit. So, forgot what I was talking about. Crap. Anyway, we'll keep going. What the hell was I talking about? I don't know. Man, I am 10 second time. This might refresh my memory for me. Thank you, Chris. We should send great thanks. Chris is number one with Amiga. Best show on YouTube, period. I am not the best show on YouTube. I am not number one with Amiga. I'm just a crazy old man that lives in his basement pretty much all the time and does Commodore repairs because I enjoy that era of my life. And, uh, yeah. Peter. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. You guys, you don't have to donate. I do appreciate it. Just so you know, every bit of money from wherever around the world after I pay my YouTube taxes on it, Patreon taxes, whatever, I turn back into the channel. Whether it be the upcoming PyMega 3 art contest, which I am going to. Radio Cruncher recently subbed. Thank you very much for the subscription. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, you can't hot swap it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. My God. I am 10 second time. It's hard when I'm live streaming. I'm answering chat. Trying to remember my, my brain that doesn't work anyway. Have you ever noticed why there's so many edits in my video? Yeah. Not the Discord. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. It was uh, Paul. Uh, quit. Anyway, I took over 1.2p Lockdown Edition. You might have heard of it. It was for the Raspberry Pi 3. And four, and that's been me ever since. I have videos all the way back from 1.2p for me. So let's get back to my input before I forget. And the C64 joystick is right here. There we go. I can customize the controls with whatever. I don't know what they are and hit resume. And that way, if I was to play a game in iGame, it would be fine. But I'm going to try that Pac Man thing. Temp, because I copied it there. Uh, Deluxe Pac Man A G A L H A. Volumes, RAM, I'm just going to run it from RAM, got a gig of it, let's see, excuse me, I think I belched live, but yeah, that's why I have so many edits in my videos, because, you know, I, I just sit here sometimes staring at the wall, like, I just, I'm a sped, I don't know, it happens, uh, show all files, please, Oh my god, come on mouse, work with me. Okay, so Deluxe Pac-Man. Oh, this ain't the real Pac-Man. This ain't the new one. You poo-poo face. Alright. SMB Mounter. Get on my Amiga. This is my server. Look how nice it runs. This is a SMB Apple X serve for you those of you who don't know. Uh, this Amiga share. I smell coffee. <laughs> Sorry. That was a total Dory moment. Miss Pac-Man. These are the new ones. So Miss Pac-Man ADF. I didn't set up a file type for that yet. I need to figure out how 3.2.1 does it. So we're just going to go system temp. I'm going to grab Miss Pac-Man. That's the new, new one that just came out. For those of you that don't know. And then we're going to do a mount, image mount here. We're going to say ADF. And we're going to go to volumes. Temp. Miss Pac-Man. And then here's the new Miss Pac-Man. That just came out. Now <coughs> check my sound. Look at that. Perfect timing. 
I used to know the pattern of this thing. Oh, I missed it because I farted around. Already screwed up. I'm playing on the C64 joystick, by the way. Gotcha, suckers. I used to know the pattern 30-something years ago, but I suck. Oh my god, this joystick sucks. I'm blaming the joystick. Come on. Oh man, that's my last power pellet. I am not going to make this without getting killed. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Want some of this? Want some of this? Uh-oh. <laughs> so, this is uh, Miss Pac-Man. Just came out. You can download yours today for free. It is from uh, the, what was it? DemoZoo.com I got this on. There's Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, all sorts of things. And if you don't want to use AWeb, which is your native Amiga web browser to browse the uh, stuff in the world, you can use a modern, get out of there, Firefox. The only stink that I have to work out on Pimega 3 is because, you know, the downloads folder is going to be a path, which I'll probably preset. What the hell? Oh, I'm not even get mouse back. I'll probably have to preset. Come on, dang it! Reboot for the the Firefox or Chrome or whatever side. So it saves it on the Amiga side, Scalo side, that side. Rebooting. Oops. So perfect example. I crashed while running a game. Okay, it sounds good. So we're going to be kicking off Pimega 3 uh, timing. Uh, time? What? I read a comment. My bad. We're going to be kicking off Pimega 3 art contest. Coming soon. Prizes are going to be, I don't know. Uh, apparently it's getting hard to find Raspberry Pis. Something about global shortage, inflation. I don't know. Maybe I can send rolls of toilet paper this year. It's first, second, or third place. You get three ply, two ply, one ply. Don't know yet, but we're going to do that. We're going to turn all of my Patreon donations right back in like we did last time. Took me six months of Patreon to get three Raspberry Pis, memory cards, and ship them out to people in the United Kingdom, Greece, and all the way down in Australia. Uh, I don't have a Raspberry Pi, but I would like to know, is it possible to run Pimega with WinUAE? Yes, it is. I didn't make that for that, but you can. You can extract all of the directories using either a Linux Live CD, like an Ubuntu CD, boot it, extract the directories from the root FS partition in HomePy Pimega disks, and match the UAE config found in the Amaberry Comfter to the uh, what this says, like when you hit F12 on a, on the Pi Amiga, you go in the old drives, you match these up on your Win UAE. You don't need USB. You will see I took DH5 out, and you can do that. I'm using Scalos because it's free. Original Workbench 1.3 or 3.2 is not. No, they're not. They are not free. They are commercial operating systems currently owned by Cloanto and Hyperion Entertainment. The only one that's actually Free, really, is 3.9. Why? Because 3.9 was owned by Hag and Partner. Is that what I'm saying? That? Hag, Hag, H and P, GBMH, post pre Hyperion stuff. Uh, they were the ones that started the whole 3940 Hyperion rewrite. Long story. Miss Pac-Man, warning contains medicinal self-harm and danger of suicide by overdose depression ghosts who often get the blues. Huh. Yeah. Thanks, Cubicle Nate. I greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, I did think about making Pimega in HDF files, but that just makes it easier to steal. Not that it's not in the steal. 
if you're the a-hole that lives in the United Kingdom that's ripping me off by selling this on eBay with a freaking ROM causing me legal issues in the United States, also selling it on Etsy without permission, copyright claiming my own videos on my own channel for my own intellectual property and the trademark that I hold. Yes, I hold the trademark for Pymega in the United States. Don't believe me? Check this out. Oh man, my session expired. <laughs> Search. So this is the, can you, I, I don't know if I can see this. I need to see the broadcaster for a second, one second. Okay, my bad. Get back to your other window, ding dong. Okay, this is the USPTO patent search. I'm gonna type P-I-M-I-G-A, enter. Hey, look at that. Voltron, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to go over here, play with your friend. Don't fall. Hi, Amiga. Standard character mark. Downloadable operating system. 2015 through 2019 current use. July 31st, 2021. Last file date. Applicant owner. Chris Edwards. My address. Live. So, you know, it's mine. Name wise. Do I own everything on there? I do not. And I didn't, never said I did. I own the word name. Pi Amiga. And I own the logo. Which is... Oh, that right there like these PJs they're fresh so that's the idea everybody's bitch that, that's part of the complaint system I have you either love Pymega or you don't and that's totally your opinion and I can respect that if you are a purist a purist a purist like a certain person from a certain country in Denmark who just totally poo pooed all over Primiga because they're an elitist prick and want nothing to do with emulation and you have hundreds of thousands of dollars that is your bag and you can feel free to do that this was not made for uh, your elitist self there I said it if you want to uh, that's my Mac keyboard if you want to spend ten thousand dollars on your warp 1260 super duper run your dumbass arcade games rock on that's all you need go for it for the rest of the world that's you know living day to day or has families and other obligations in life and you know can't collect amigas over the past 30 years that's what you can do does amicit require much customization to get running under amiberry i am not amicit i don't know remember amicit and Amoebian, which is another one, they all use the same emulator. They all use Amaberry. So they're all either preset up with an image, uh, perfect scenario in configurations. We have Mega AGS. You have Mega AGS, WHD load, all sorts of stuff. Whoops, Mega AGS isn't going to run. Why? Because I didn't configure the ROM for it. Oh well. But the point is, you have Mega AGS as a pre-configured environment by the million boys, million dollar boys, I think the people are. And they make uh, games, uh, a configuration for that. It's just a custom workbench, just like Pymega is. It's a, excuse me, it's a compilation of a lot of collections. Zeb Elwood's WHD load. Uh, EAB's Aminet, uh Archive.org, Commodore, Amiga, ADF section, 1.5, I did the Tosec pack. All this stuff you can get yourself. The point with Pymega is it's packaged in a nice environment with programs and everything works. Does it work perfect? No, it does not. I never said it did, but it works. Like if I want to run, watch this not work. A D paint. Where is it? I have to choose a resolution that's Amiga-ish. I can't even see what this says, so I'm just going to pick this one. And, you know, I wanted to draw an ice cream cone. <laughs> you can do that. So, it works. Point is, there's lots of things. 
Steve, I copied all of the games over from PyMeet to Linux, FSUAE, and it worked fine, but it is not practical to port the config and it loses unique character. So it's best on a Pi. Yeah, I think Amoeba is no longer in development. Oh, I thought it was. I thought they just released one. It was a paid... What happened was they went from free to paid. And Amoebian was my first dabble into Raspberry Pi Amiga emulation. Do I have any recommendations? Dr. Ratten, Ratten Kaiser, Kaiser, I don't think that you can have a copyright on something that's 30 years old. You bought from two bankruptcies and never wrote part of the code yourself. I didn't say I had a copyright. I have a trademark on a word. It is a word trademark and a logo trademark. So I don't have a copyright on something 30 years old. I do have intellectual property creation for the customization of this. So yeah. But, you know, I have a word trademark on the word Pymega as a downloadable operating system and the Pymega logo. That is what I trademarked. FM Lazar, someone who downloaded the Tosec pa as someone who downloaded the Tosec package, you need to be where you need a lot of time, patience, and bandwidth. Yes, I know. I deduplicated, detriplicated 1.5s. And this, I don't like this. Let's go into uh, natural here. Changing my backdrop color. Let's let it reboot. I'm just catching up on comments. Uh, recommend, okay, Mark Fletcher asks. Uh, do you recommend downloading and applying OS updates for the underlying OS or just wait for the next Pymega release? You can apply updates on the Linux side if you would like. Just do not do a full update or up, full upgrade because that will take you from 10 Buster to Bullseye 11. See, I remembered it. The they in Amoebian was a he. Kind of like the they in Pymega is a me. Get it. I started to collect, Andy uh, says, I started to collect Amigas for the last two years, and I was lucky to get some reasonable, for blah, 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 I'm sorry, lucky to get some for a reasonable amount of money. But nowadays you got to pay 300 bucks plus a working A1200. If you can, if you can find them for 300 bucks, that's great. I paid a significant amount of money for mine. Uh, the Amiga 2000 I've had since I worked for Commodore. The Amiga 4000 I bought several years ago for 1800 US broke. The Amiga 3000, which is behind my comment machine here, was 17, 18, 1900 broke. Five, six hundred hours in parts for each one. Upgrades. I have thousands into these machines. Uh, the only one I got lucky on was the Amiga 1000. Which now has the new badges. I'm going to shoot you around here into the ugly land. You're going to notice that there are new badges on the Amiga. These are Boing Ball badges. They are pre... They're Boing Ball badges. They're pre-Commodore checkmark badges. What's up with the Amiga 1000, Chris? Nothing. It works fine. I use it all the time. Love it. Love it. There's just Amigas all over the place. There's Amigas at my feet. There's Amigas under the table. There's some down there, over there. I have a whole room full on the other side. We have repairs to do. That's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. We got Voltron. We got Omnibot, who got a, a new badge on him the other day. Check that out. Commodore Omnibot. Voltron, you can get your butt back over here. Voltron I've had since I was 13 years old, 478 years ago. So, la la la. Wow, this looks purple on my screen and blue. Okay, never mind. It's finally catching up with bandwidth. Can you recommend a USB 3.5 sound output device for the Pi 400? Alex, it takes uh, any USB device. Excuse my head while I stick it in your face. I use... Uh, I can't reach it. I can't find it. My desk is a mess. I wasn't prepared for that question. Here it is. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the grunts and moans. That's how you know you get old when you uh, make a lot of noise when you move. Here you go. Uh, this is a unbranded, simple USB to 3.5 mic and out. And it works fine. 
Lou, the Commodore Omnibot. May I? I have a mount o loop. Uh, yes, Steve. Linux utilities can mount Amiga partitions, but the Amaberry emulator can mount Amiga hard drives. The latest release has HDF CHD support also, which is compressed hard disk or drive or doohickey. Uh, jumping back comments, Andy says, so if you would like to enter this awesome retro hobby, the Pi Amiga is one of the best options you can get for not even a hundred bucks. Uh, that's just an entry into the market retro hobby. Yes, this is a niche market. If you want a turnkey solution, get yourself an Amiga 500 mini and roll with it. You don't need to do nothing with that. Remember, this is a custom built compilation of everything from around the internet. Like I was going over earlier before I got told I don't own a copyright. Um, the Zeb L Woods, and I've said this a hundred times, nobody just watches my videos. Zeb L Woods WHD load pack. Wonderful guy, throws together a WHD load pack. Where's it all come from? EAB, the grandest.nuftp. That's the biggest repository of Amiga junk on the internet besides Aminet. So EAB's archives are on here. Their music mods are from uh, Demo Zoo. All the demos are from Demo Zoo, from the previous builds, the WHD load packs, iDemo is just, like I said a hundred times, it's iGame with a separate repository for the WHD load demos, which are in a separate folder. This is not a change of, of, of what PyMiga is. Uh, I, I shouldn't have to defend what, you know, has been created here. I feel like I don't even, I don't know, I mean, do I own this? Yes, no. Did I make all this? Yeah, all that since 1.2p, Pi Amiga has been me, and a group of beta testers who've been a freaking awesome bunch of friends, minus a couple who stole it and sold it. You know, the majority of the people that I know now from the years of doing this is is like you know the only trustworthy people that I trust with this. This isn't even out to them yet because it's been so flaky for me. I wanted to get it at least in the alpha stage. So that's why I'm calling this pre-alpha. Look, Kirk and Bones agree. So, yeah. Um, but it works well. Like, the I, like, Stady fixed this, right? Oops. All. If I want, I don't know, a sensation, right? Right-click on it, go to properties. Hey, we have a nice big button and a nice check available. I can say OK. And now if I go to favorites, there's my games. I want to watch Nine Fingers. Whoa, that's loud. Sorry. It works perfectly. I'm going to let this roll while we watch the double broadcaster. There we go. Um, I'm going to answer some questions while Nine Fingers rolls. Which 3D printer am I using? Or let's back it up. I missed a couple comments, and I apologize. Wasn't there a time... Whoops. Okay. Better than Graceland, Steve. Thank you. Uh, Laurie says, Amiga 1000 was the best designed PC. Well, wasn't a PC, and no, the Amiga 3000 was the best engineered Commodore. The Amiga 1000 was Amiga Incorporated, a.k.a. Hytoro, when Commodore purchased them out from under Atari. That was the machine that J-Miner was creating with his team. And that was a great machine. It is a great machine, but it was, I don't think it was finished when it should have been further along when it, before it was released. They rushed it to the market because of the whole Atari situation. So that's, that's a whole other story. Um, Knight, wasn't there a time when the Amiga 1000, you had to load from the Kickstart disc? You are correct. It has a limited amount of Ranger RAM in there that kind of holds the pseudo Kickstart. And then uh, prompts you for a workbench disc. That's why the NTSC motherboards have like a a raised up daughter board on top. Yep, that's what all that's about. PAL units, they kind of integrated that in the board. But yeah, with the Pi Storm, you don't need the kickstarts anymore. Everything's kind of virtualized. Steve Minot. I ha may have Mount Oloop. Okay, I covered that one. Commodore Omnibot. Yep, Lou. Catching up here. Andy. Uh, whoops. Man, my comments just blew past. 
Where did you get those bowling ball badges for the A1000? Still got one sitting under my desk waiting for a restoration. What's wrong with your 1000, Andy? They usually are bulletproof. You can drop them off a cliff and their motherboards will still work. Boing ball badges came from Michael. One of my YouTube subscribers and Discord members. Which 3D printer am I using? I am using the Ender 3 V2. Uh, that one? Crap, I can't see. Yeah, there it is. Ender 3 V2 with a Con... Uh, Come grow magnetic, magnetic bed. That's what that one is. Yeah, gotta turn the broadcaster back on so I can see what's uh going on there. This demo will loop. I forgot about it for uh, 23 hours one time. Let's uh let's just uh F10 that. Let's uh Jesus was a demo maker. These are one of my these are some of my favorite demos. Crank the volume up on this a little bit. Amatron, Voltron's girlfriend. Evening, Denny. Oh my god, that's too loud. I'm sorry. If it was are not sure if you can get Workbench running on Amiga 500 Mini. No, no, it's just games. It's totally just games. But like I was saying, if you want just a games machine, go that route. There's no con you know configuration or buffers or... One dude made this and one dude made that, and you gotta do this magic dance and a witch hunt and a smoke smoke signals to make your audio work. No, if you want something that's just perfect for what you're trying to do, which is play games, if that's what you want, feel free to just just get the 500 mini, and you should get it anyway to support the people with the mini mini games, and uh, you get a cool controller with it, CD32 controller that's USB, works on Pi Mega. And the mouse, which is a tank mouse, works on Pi Mega. It's a USB. Zekian, you're doing a great job. No defense needed. Thanks, I appreciate it. I always feel like I have to defend myself. And you can add your own game. FM Lazar, and you can add your own games to it. Perhaps one more. C64 Max. He needs a word processor. Ah, I just lost all that crap off my screen. That's funny. Oh, PC has a personal computer. I'm sorry. Steve, the only distracted me from me back day was Wilma Deering from Buck Rogers. BD, BD, BD. <laughs> try Frogger. Okay. Chuck Anderson says, try Frogger, the media player. All right. Boop. Um, yeah. I have Frogger set up on here. So here is, uh, I have to turn the volume down. Here's Dua Lipa levitating. I'll let the first little bit play, so you can see the sync. I'm gonna turn it down. So that's Frogger. It's a uh, plan MPEG three Divix, I think it is. I don't know. I forget. But that's a uh, Dua Lipa levitating, playing just totally fine. And you just click the mouse, and you get back out of it. So Frogger works. Let's see, our, uh, little, little, our Cageman. Hi, Chris. I played Settlers on Pine Mega a few days ago, but the screen is cut off all around. Is that for everybody or something on my setup? Was that a WHD load game? Let's see. The Settlers? Let's do it. Let's turn the volume up. Uh, normally, it reduces the resolution to fit on a 4x3 original. So let's do that. This is Pine Mega 3. The set the settlers that one this game i'll try it i can watch starstruck all day long too hello from poland hello is this what you're talking about this is a four by three on a, on a widescreen monitor so this is appropriate and that is how it's supposed to look you can stretch it yourself but yeah Twilight Zoner, people have an issue with everything. If there's a complaint to be made in the Amiga community, it will be made, and I just happen to be the big butt in front of that foot. Agree, Steve. Cubicle Nate, do you feel like the Pi Storm is kind of a cheat, or is it legit in your opinion? I I don't know. Um, 
I like the Pi Storm project, and I think it is a major competitor to the Vampire. I don't think it's a cheat, because it's doing nothing different. You know, it, the the new EMU 68 cores... Sorry, I, I feel like I have to talk to you guys. Oh, wrong direction. Now I can't see. You're probably seeing my head, and I'm retarded. Okay, so let me turn this down, because now I can see the camera. All right, I'll move this here. So the question was... Uh, my cubicle name. Do you feel like the pie storm is kind of a cheat or is it legit? Man, my eyeballs are hurting. I'm sorry, I gotta rub them for a second. I don't think the pie storm is a fake or a cheat at all. It uses uh, Musha Musha Mushashki. What is that emulator called? I forget. Um, it uses that emulator. It does use virtual hard drives, which are a blessing and a curse. Um, can it use Amiga peripherals? Sure can. I have um, on my Amiga 500 Pi Storm and that other 2000 on the other side. The one we put the RGB to HDMI in and all that other fancy crap in the Pi Storm. I have a GVP card in that. Works fine. I'm actually going to be using that Amiga with the Pi Storm to test these two GVP cards for repair and see if I can even get them sorted. So yeah, I think it's a good option. It's growing. It has a team of people, not just a dude and a couple friends. So yeah, that's a project to really get involved in. If you're interested in anything physical Amiga and you want some performance for cheap, um, the Pi Storm project is great. Get them while you can get them. Amiga Kit sells them. Uh, many other retailers are now selling them. I don't know if Sorden, I don't know if AmigaStore.pu is selling them. EU, I don't know. If you can get one, get one and get it as soon as you can. I don't know the chip shortage thing, the Pi 3A thing. If you can find one, 70, 80, even 100 bucks, get it because it's evolving. You don't need to do anything else except download some code, get pull a couple things and recompile. Bob's your uncle. EMU 68 is, a close, is approaching Pi Mega uh, performance. 1,000 MIPS is their target. 1,000 downgraded MIPS was my target. Keeping it on track. You see it runs fine. I'm running an X-Windows subsystem. Linux, PyMiga is a different scenario. PyStorm is Linux with a custom emulator that interacts directly with the hardware. You're not running an OS emulator that's just being displayed on your Amiga screen. You're using your Amiga for your real Amiga. And and that's that's pretty much it. This is a emulated system. That's real hardware. Is it 100%? Nothing is because you're emulating a CPU. You're emulating RAM. It's not going to be totally, totally uh, 100%. My comments are scrolling off the screen faster than I can uh, faster than I can get them. Uh, Jerry, great. I love the display you have under the Moss Technology sign. That is, oh my God. Sorry, Voltron. Almost knocked your wing off there. You're 30-something years old. This, I'm sorry, you can't hear the mic. This is a Pixu, um, yep, Devoom Pixu Max. Its little brother is here, the Devoom Tivu. These are on Devoom, D-I-V-O-O-M dot com. I did videos on them in the past about what they are. It is 2.16 p.m. I shot over my limit here, and that's great. I'm going to finish answering some comments, and I'm going to have to wrap it up. Um, people just, blah, blah, blah. which one of your setups is closest to being my daily driver, if not already? Uh, pretty much PyMega is my daily driver all day, every day when I can, because I have to get it sorted for next Christmas and I want to make it something else new. I have, I take questions and comments each year because constructive criticisms, uh, actual fixes and etc and try to incorporate them each year into the next release. I have a green book I go through every year from 1.2p and write things down and fix them, send them out to the beta testers. We all do the same changes, so I'm not uploading a 40 gig image each time. We discuss what we each do, and that's kind of how beta testing works. I have a group of beta testers, and I have three who actually help me. Um, they know who they are. We have a lot of people who just download it. We never hear from them again. Once in a great blue moon, I hear, hey, can I get the next release? And the next thing you know, it's on eBay in the United Kingdom or it's on Etsy. So, yeah. Steve, what's the white keyboard? This white keyboard is a Apple 
keyboard uh, model number. Uh oh, I'm hitting buttons. A1048 USB uh, keyboard. Did I just quit my stream? No. Oh, I can answer questions there. I don't have to watch my own stream. I've noticed he was running Mac OS earlier. It's an emulator inside of an emulator. I wonder if there's a version of Shapeshifter Balak that runs natively on Pi OS. No, there's not. Uh, which one of your setups is closest to being a driver? Pi Amiga, followed by the 3000. Pi Storm is a lot more affordable an option compared to a vampire. It is, and that's why it's such a threat to them. Uh, Holden Modified Channel just did. He's the only one I know that has a Firebird. So if you're interested in checking out the new Firebird, there's the Apollo Firebird, which is the Vampire V4 for the Amiga 500, 2000, 1000, your mom. And there's the Ice Drake, which is the 1200s uh, new Vampire V1200, whatever it is, V2 replacement. I have a, a, a Vampire V2 in the Amiga 2000 at the end of the hall there. It's been running great for three plus years that I've owned it. Never a problem. Core updates, I leave alone. I did the ones until it got pretty stable, and then I just don't mess with it. I enjoy it, and that's what I use it for. Uh, it uses all my hardware. I have even done videos of Core 3 AGA versus, you know, could I run Starstruck on an um, ECS Amiga 2000? I did. But now I don't have to because of, of Pimiga. Hi, John. Andy, uh... Answering questions about that. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Uh, when the comments, I have like a scroll. I have to keep scrolling through. Yes, I'm using a Pi Storm on my 1000. I love it. ECO 20, Furia. I, that's a love-hate relationship, Andy. I, As you know, I have the, the Furia 600 right below me. And many times I feel like stomping my foot through it. But, you know, all in all, once you can get it sorted, it's a good uh, it's a good accelerator if you have about 63, 63 or 64 SD cards to try and get working on it. 4 gig or greater, uh, transcend industrial grade, I've had great luck with. All the way up to 3.2.1. I just did a video on that. I think I might have posted it. You need an accelerator for your A1000. You have an A video 24. 24 internal card for it, but I need more RAM oomph for CPU. Pi Storm. RC Keachman, yes, no, after the intro. Oh man, that daggone thing slid up again. Chris Cool Stuff, no need to justify it. If someone doesn't like it, they're free not to use it. I agree, but sometimes it's hard to take comments personally. I think about using a Pi Storm on my own heart. Thanks for blah, 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 blah. Yep. Vampires, eh, but it's fun. Vampire, yeah. Okay, there's hold and modify right there. So if you guys have questions about the fire turd, the the Apollo fire turd, hold and modify did a video. I think he broke it. And he's like, well, that went 600 bucks, but the pin was just off and it didn't click down or go into the socket. So that's sort of it. It's working. So yeah. So hold and modify channel. Hold and modify. Dude with a ham on his head. Oh, he's right there on the screen in the chat so he has a great youtube channel that's where i learned my light wave that's where i learned my uh what's that thing program called um that yeah that one that makes all the weird shit yep hi i'm 10 second time theory love year hello from france chris hello Try the waitlist on Discord. No, the Discord Pi Storm waitlist is not in void. They're not doing that anymore. There, there is local sellers on there that will sell you Pi Storms. Just get on eBay or Amiga Kit and just order one. Need an internal SDCF adapter for hard drive inside my 1002. My first Amiga should be treated. Uh, 44 pin Chinese one I use. It works great. Pi Amiga. This UAE emulator only. I don't understand the comment. UAE. No. It's Amaberry, which is based... Amaberry is Midwin. Uh, Demetrius's take on Win UAE for ARM. So, it's not, you know, the same. It's a little bit different. Dang it, I'm sorry, I can't. 
Have you done a video on changing the resolution to make text easy to read? Oh, like the text easy to read on 3.0? Yeah, let's uh, zoom in here. I'm sorry here. We're going, uh, we're going old school hands nasty free here. Where's my broadcaster? Uh, let's see. Is that easier to read? Yep. Let's go to show all. Let's uh, just go to games. Are they easy to read? Is your CPU easy to read? Menus, that's easier to read. Yes. Uh, like I said, uh, Doug from Tenmark did a video on it the other day, last week, about... Um, come on. Nope. There we go. Sorry. Sorry. About this. About Pymega. And, you know, he just did an honest review. What's bad? What sucks? What's good? How to fix audio? Fonts? Didn't like UFO? So I took it out. It's just Times New Roman. Everything's nice and clear. Crystal clear. Hi, Chris. Greetings from Germany. Greetings. I've thought about getting a mister and trying MIG, MIG on it. Yeah. No. Have you done a video? Okay, I just did that one. It's good how UAE is good. It's not perfect. It's okay. Uh, PyStorm gives you an internal HD for the 1000 through a file. It's a it's a hard drive file. So sort of, kind of, but not really. But yeah, I use mine all the time. Love it. Bam, dead, con. If anyone has any questions about the V4, I'm here. Blender, hold and modify is awesome. Yes. And it's more than just a ham on his head. More than a ham on his head. Is it? I saw the ham the ham bone thing. John P. Hi, Chris. Unfortunately, I don't have a Pi 4 or the 400, but the thought, what the heck? I should try it on my 3B. Works perfect now. So, yeah. I didn't write Pi Mega for a 3. Can it run on a 3B? Sure can. Did I announce that it can? Sure didn't. Why not? Why didn't you just say it runs on a 3? Because it doesn't run well. 1.5, I did say 3. B plus 4 or 400. And it it runs. It's capable of running it, but it is not a pleasant experience. It's choppy. You have to shrink the audio to 720 if you're lucky. Icons get big. It's not worth what I wanted for a vision of this. Okay? It, it's, not, it's not what I wanted at all. So that's why I didn't say it. I have a spare tiny PC with a 1.6 Intel Atom. UE is great for it. Cool. It means the river in French. Oh. Wonderful. Thanks. I meant to put out. I saw some other comments from Doug from De that Doug from Denmark. No, Doug, 10 minute Amiga retrocast, 10 mark. The 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 dude f Dennis from Denmark, is that who you're talking about? Yeah, that's the dude who totally trashed me and all of his minions are jumping all over me. Hey, make it. You know, I have something for you, buddy. I don't care. That's okay. Is it possible to make a Linux kernel with a built-in Amiga emulator? Oh, you mean like uh, like that? With the features, m m there already is out there. The m m mushash, Mushashi that the PyStorm is using. But you need to write your own kernel. And it's not a graphical environment. It's not a chipset environment. It's just like a hardware type emulator that the PyStorm uses to emulate a CPU. And then on top of that, you have to have your real hardware to initiate Workbench and all that stuff. So for Pi, Amaberry currently is the, the best one we got. Is the source for UAE the foundation for most of these efforts you're talking about? Um... I don't know. That would be a question for Midwin and AKA Demetrius uh, Amaberry.com. He makes the emulator. Andy, if you're looking for explanations and docs for Pimega, get on the Discord server. Check the chats, pin comments. Ha he he ha. Thank you. God bless you too and happy new year. Did I reach the bottom of the comments? Finally. Nope. <laughs> Chris, I can't thank you enough for your efforts with Pi Mega. I'm running 2.0 on my Pi 400. So many memories are flooding back each time I use it. Is it possible to buy the Pi Mega hoodie? Ask Staney. 
he made these for me. There is a hoodie and there is a long sleeve shirt. He tried to set up a store, but someone copyrighted him and it wasn't me and shut him down. There's haters everywhere. We can't get a foothold. We can't get anything done. It's just getting harder and harder. So it's, yes, it's a rough road. So there were some legal issues with myself and certain companies and certain individuals last year. That is why the name is trademarked. That is why the logo is trademarked. I'm, I'm not getting into that again. So, yeah. It would be awesome to run Amivari on a bare metal hypervisor. It sure would. Have I come across an issue with Pimega 2 USB RJ11 adapter? Fire button doesn't seem to work with a quick shot 2. Stick button works with my SX64. I don't remember where I got the adapter. Um, I don't know. RJ11 adapter? Isn't that the telephone cord adapter? You mean DB9? The USB to DB9? Uh, once again, that would be on our Discord server. A lot of people, besides me, I don't have everything. I don't have every adapter. I'm full up right here. This is my Pi 400 full, just running 3.0. Because I'm on Ethernet, I got the mouse, I got the joystick plugged in, which I don't need, really. Eh. And I'm running USB 3.0 off micro SD instead of the internal while I build it because I can stick it in my card reader and do magic. So that's usually what I do. Right, yeah, Andy, I agree. The the Pi Storm project is great. Yep, and EMU 68 is growing so fast and coming along great. And they're in the same boat as me with this Man X uh, on uh, Buster versus whatever the new one is. I said it earlier. I forgot it already. One idea for 3.0 is a home screen or choice of using a minimalist workbench 1.0 through 3 goals. No, really? The idea of Pimega was to what if, not what is. Do you, if you want that, then then F12 and click Mega AGS and then hit escape. Or WHD load menu and hit escape. There's your minimalist workbench. AROS is... I don't like AROS one bit. Alright. DB9. Fun fact, most CPU initially boots from everything. The Pi actually graphic chip it boots CPU. Interesting. In your stream thumbnail, you showed Amiga picture. An animation with lemmings and other characters walking around the Amiga. Does anyone know that video title? In my stream thumbnail? What? This stream thumbnail? Oh, that's that's Lemmings. Holiday Lemmings. The 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 picture with the the desk and all that stuff. It's Holiday Lemmings. I've done so much for the Amiga community. Happy New Year, God bless. God bless you guys too. Happy New Year to you all too. Is it possible to run Amiga W NTS double NTSC or double PAL? If this is, we can have richer sound on Paula. Is it? If is, we can have Richard Sound and Paula. No, because see, this is emulated. Regardless, Paula is the real Amiga chip. The Raspberry Pi, why does the Raspberry Pi audio suck? I'm going to show you why it sucks. Well, you can't even see it. Because in between my USB and Ethernet and this fan, which I can't even show you because it's not bright enough, and I'll get a flashlight on it. Oh, too bright. Mm. Where is it? Damn it. In between my fat finger here and here, there is a small black chip. That is your deck. That's the digital audio converter for a Raspberry Pi. And it is sucky. It's just total suck. It's probably the size of my finger nail fat. That's a capacitor. I'm sorry. It's right there. Those three little guys right there. That's your digital audio converter and their crap. Raspberry Pi Foundation is not going to put a Sound Blaster capable AWE super duper sound card in a third world computer. Yep, that's why I said third world computer. Raspberry Pi was meant to be a cheap internet capable alternative computer for impoverished third world countries. And all of us nerds got a hold of them and made them play Doom. So... 
Chris has some arcade games running on Amiga and, of course, Mac games. Yes, there are many non-Amiga games on Amiga. If you have not seen my Amiga release video, please go watch that. So, real briefly, this is Amiga 3.0 Alpha. It's still running the Amiga 2.0 stuff. It's running X Windows underneath subsystems so I can launch host-run apps like Firefox, like LibreOffice, like Terminals, like whatever Linux can run, you can run on the Amiga side and natively do stuff on the Amiga. Like if I wanted to on the on the uh, Amiga side, if I wanted to go to, I'm calling it Amiga side, Scalos. Excuse me. If I wanted to like go to YouTube. So here's my YouTube page. It's slow. It's not perfect. This is pre-alpha. It will get better. That's why I had to lower the megahertz of the uh, emulated side down to around 1,000 or 1,100 because I needed the resources for the X Windows side to be able to display H.264, HTML5, web pages, video, etc. All right. Um, for for games other than than uh, Amiga games, take a pick on the games drive and take your pick. So these are ports. Uh, one thing I have not done is I have not done the Quake demo on Pi Mega 3. The record is 4.83 seconds on my bare bones Pi 400 with nothing else running. I had nothing else running. The standard record is around 5 to 6 seconds. So here we go. I'm running this in whatever mode pops up. 320 by 208 bit. This is the demo. So it's about five or six seconds. I have some buffer checks on here. So 146, 6.62. So we're a little bit slower, you know. I have some things that are benchmarking things and slowing it down. So can you play these games on your emulated environment? Yes, you can play Doom, you can play Quake, you can play Duke Nukem, you can play Blood. <coughs> Excuse me. Many. <clears throat> Sorry, got so caught up in the moment, swallowed, went down the wrong tube, nearly died. All right, so yes, the games are available. Um, I even had a Pac Man on here before the new Miss Pac Man came out. So, yeah, should I play it? I don't know. So this is where we get into this is where we get into people yelling about timing. When I shoot, it doesn't make the noise. As soon as I shoot, the fire comes out. And the sound is there. Why isn't this perfect? Because of your poo-poo DAC. See how I'm on two buffers? If I crank this down. See what I mean? But you're going to lose quality. But it's a dynamic thing. If I want to listen to music, now watch. I'm going to leave this on minimum, right? There's my game. Works fine. And this stream wasn't meant to be this at all. So if you guys are in the old UK land, I'm just going to reboot. And I'm keeping you awake. Please feel free to, you know, say kiss my bahooka and go drink your tea. And enjoy your evening. And I just blew my stuff up. So. That might be the end of that. <laughs> I've been having issues. With SD cards. My SD cards have been written to. A couple thousand times each. And I just blew up my stuff. Yay. So. Yep. Great. Oh, man, look. I can't do anything. Let's give her a full reboot, and I bet she's going to blow up the bootloader. Important safety tip. That's my fifth SD card this month. They should last longer than that. No, they've been around for a long time. Surely by now with the Pi Storm, the Amiga has enough to go on to run a remote desktop from another Pi installed, giving the machine full internet capability. You can get on the network with the Pi Storm and I blew up my SD card. Shoot. And that's that. So.
so yeah yay we blew it up did we i don't know let's give her the tanya there we go <laughs> who knows could have been a jiggle loose it might still be blown up i don't know we'll see well at least if we're getting through this part it's it's loading so 1938 here in blighty where's blighty it's 2 30 here i'm hungry my fat butt has not ate chicken in 24 hours that's crazy oh nope i i stand corrected i did roll out at around midnight last night Chuck Anderson, running Pi OS apps inside Amiga in the Amiga site. Is that based on Rabbit Hole? No, it's based on Amaberry's technology called Host Run, which I think Amoebian Am is the one that termed the term Rabbit Hole. Amoebian, Pimiga, Ama, uh, yeah, A Amakit use the. Uh, the same emulator. We all use Amaberry for our emulators. Blitterstudio.com. This program is free software. You can redistribute it or modify it. GNU, blah, blah, blah. I work directly with Midwin in communication with. I don't touch this stuff. He is the programmer. He does all the magic that makes this happen. This is an old version. I need to get a new version. How do I do that? There's a bunch of ways to skin a cat. CD ammo berry. Now I'm going to blow mine up. I know it is. So I'm going to do a... I always pseudo everything. Don't hate on it, brother. Get pull. This is getting the changes. These are the... Okay. Please commit your changes. It zipped up my boot data and my conf already. Perfect. Oh, crap. CD conf... Uh, pseudo move Emma. Oops. I hate this keyword, by the way. AB conf dot old. Stanley's yelling at me right now in text. I can hear it. WHD. Your local change to the following files be written by the. I don't know what that is. Let's go in there because I need to see. So we're going to go to home. Pi, Amaberry, what file? Boot dash data dot zip. I don't even have that. I don't even have that. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, in real life, Aborting, it aborted. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you could compile compile a new one. Now this is a weirdo scenario. So, yep, it's an old war name for England. Shire. I'm sorry, I missed that. Bloody is in England. Gotcha. I didn't get the point. Like you do with a Pentium two running a remote desktop, the Pi gives you a modern. Web browser on a Pi 4 capable machine if the Amiga has a remote client, same thing works. That's what the project of the A314 was designed to do originally. The A314 was going to use the power of a Raspberry Pi to enhance the Amiga. And I missed that. I can't find an A314 anywhere. I would love to do one on an A314. Yeah. Andy, I agree. The reason PyMiga exists is because I'm getting old and I could never find PPCs or 68060s or even 040s in my 20s because I was always starving, broke, and uh, needed something. So, Chris, have I watched Black Adder, Rowan Atkinson? My recommendation if I haven't. Mr. Bean? Is there an Amiga Pi distribution that contains Amiga applications instead of games? Yeah, you can just not mount the games directory of uh, this and go to programs and there's all your stuff. 
and and go into audio and there's all your audio programs and coding you know people look around for a little bit there's a lot of stuff in your development you want to write a program uh emulation mm, you might not need that internet yep got that too word processors tools various little stupid things programs uh word processors want to write a novel let's go final writer do it up Hello, blah, 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 right, make a queue, don't save. So there's plenty of uh, programs on here, but is there an Amiga distribution that, whoops, that uh, contains only those things? I do not know. Thanks, is that in the frequently asked questions? A lot of this stuff is in the readme, and I feel like I'm going over what PyMiga was. This this is PyMiga 3. This is a tickle taste of, of what it will become this year. And I end up going over what 2.0 is. So, yeah, the, the README contains all the stuff for 2.0, for USB audio, and for Bluetooth, and the controller. And my only problem with a USB header on a Pi is this. It doesn't. I can't fit it in here because it's in the daggone way. And if I use my USB 3 port, it works. But then I can't, I got to bend it over and it, it's just, it's not, I can't get it. That's why I don't even bother. And I just freaking did something. There we go, caps lock. So that's the, I don't use USB because it's too fat. If you could find a straight thin one, maybe, I don't know. They're hit or miss if they work with the Pi. If they work with the Raspberry Pi itself, they'll work with Amaberry. Because it's just using the Pi's DAC to get the audio out. And you would use also Mixer to do it. And if you want, I can... I don't even have the room to even test that here on 3. Let's do this. For the final time, I'm going to turn off this. Just kill it. Remove this. We're going to go back to Pi Mega 2. And I'm going to try this because it frees me up a USB slot. We're going to move this over. We're going to plug in this USB audio dude to here. And this will have to be it because if I unplug the audio from my monitor, I cannot get it back in there without flipping the monitor, moving Voltron and Omnibot and twisting this thing around. And it's going to be fun. I'm going to have to reinstall PyMiga 1.5, which worked fine on my system. I cannot get 2 to run Scalos at all. can load the games, but I think I've borked my install. Okay. I don't think this is the right card. I have so many cards. No. It's this one. Bear with me. Okay, so for those of you who are just joining or whatever, we're trying to install a USB DAC on PyMiga 2 instead of 3. We just played around with version 3, X Windows subsystem, and yeah, I need a, I need a, I need a bigger desk. That's what I need. I'm not hitting up the beer yet. Maybe later on this evening. Gotta go get some food. I'm hungry. Gotta feed this thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's my OLED. My OLED screen is yelling. Remote I.O. error. I have header pin. Yep. There's magic stuff for this. So, I think I borked it. Bork. That's just freaking lovely. See what happens when you get this is this is live broadcasting right here. I don't know how people do that. I do need a beer, but I have to drive in a little bit. And I don't want to do that. Marco, you're welcome. Andy, I see. 
HST workbench needs a kickstart. Uh. Now, you know, classic workbench from Blood Witch is a workbench replacement, but it's still a Commodore Amiga workbench. So, kickstart is $7, and this is borked. Either that or it's this. Let's try it without this. Maybe it doesn't like this adapter. Maybe this isn't the one I was using. Let's see if this boots. I think I have SD card weary woe issues. But I keep some spares for when I bork one. Where's my beer? Yeah, Andy. I might just say hell with it. But I have to drive and get some food. Because no one cooks here on the weekends. Do we get past the OLED screen? Is it this that's borking me? Nope, it's not. Let's try another SD card. Isn't that messed up? Because I just used this one in this Pi. Because this is for the Pi 4 with the yeah, weird Pi Mega display. Let's grab another one. We're batting a thousand here, guys. What's this one? This is a 64 gig. Uh, That's not the one. Oh yeah, there we go. I'll plug this one in. This might be an old image is the problem. I don't know what's on here and what's in here. That's 128. Like, I have the perfect memory. I never forget anything or where anything's at. Heck no. I forgot what I was talking about midstream. So yeah. Uh, what is my favorite SD card? Samsung. His favorite SD cards are the Samsung Evo. Believe it or not... I can't afford the Samsungs. I personally like Lexar Media, L-E-X-A-R. It's an IBM type of company. And, uh... Oh, my can opener dropped. My bottle opener dropped. By your command, this is Pi Amiga. Alright, yeah, sure it is. Okay, so I don't know which version this is. Let's plug this DAC in. But I like Lexar Media, and I hate SanDisk. But lately, there's a store in the United States called Walmart. It's like a white trash mart. It's where all the weirdos and freaks go after midnight. Put your pajamas on and go right to the store. On is their brand, house brand. That's what uh, I run on those two because they're super cheap and it just seems to work. Okay, so I plugged that mixer in before I shut the pie on. So I'm going to turn it off and turn it on with the mixer in. I'm going to unplug the speakers right here. They are going directly. Oh into whoops into here now also mixer is not set up for this DAC yet so let's see even a how it sounds I don't know if this was the one I used in the past so we'll see uh, yeah I use gparted on the Linux side you've seen my Ubuntu setup with the Hellraiser cube screensaver I that's how I've been fixing them for the past two years I need to get my button gear and order a bunch of 64 gig uh, cards. Why not larger? Because I don't start out imaging that much. I like to even have it down to 32. Like a lot of times I'll strip all the games out of here. I'm just trying to get the core OS loaded. It'll be like 30 megs, 50 megs. And then I start loading RTG and I start loading all this stuff on and then we get it back going. So we booted, we have no audio. So let's go like this, quit. Also mixer, I forgot sudo. And then if this is detected, you'll see it up here. So we're going to do F6, select sound card. And there it is, USB PNP sound device. I'm going to drag the camera in here to not show you. So I typed ALSA, A-L-S-A-M-I-X-E-R. So you have a wall, you have a, uh, okay, so that's, you see that, and that's my ceiling. Okay, so that, whoops, sorry. I am running way over my stream limit here, but hell with it. USB plug and play sound device. We're going to use the arrow keys and turn up the volume. Hopefully I'm not turning it up too much. And then we're going to say escape. And then we're going to uh, CD did, and then I'm going to sudo dot slash m uh, very dot sh. I just want it to load manually. And let's see if we hear something. This is the Pimega over USB deck. 3.5. Hey guys, what didn't work? It didn't work. Did I pull the power out? Nope. I have light on the card. You can see here I have light on the card. Am I plugged into the wrong port? 
No, I'm not. England, Walmart is called ASDA. Do they have, like, people of ASDA.com? They have people of Walmart.com. It's some scary stuff. Even being an American, that's that's some sad stuff. Uh, yep. Yep. So, that USB sound is not working. Oh my god, I can't type today. Let's do this. Uh, sudo raspy config. Because I don't think also does everything. And I'll select the sound card there. Oops. Audio. It doesn't even show. Raspy config only shows HDMI 1. It doesn't show that heads, headphone adapter. But also does show it on F6 select sound card. So it is saying the plug and play sound device. But it's still falling back. It won't allow me to save it. So here I can see the also mixer is detecting the sound card. Is detecting the playback. But let's see. Where's the... Uh, isn't there a test sound in here? Or I have to type that weirdo command. I don't know. I forget. Both in right volumes. There's no test sound. Okay. F3, F4, F5. So it does detect the microphone port too. Because it has a microphone and a audio. So it's detecting it. It's just... Uh, it's not showing up in as an audio source. I don't know. So, but I unplugged my my thing anyway. So, pretty neat. I've been to Walmart. Twenty meters of each product, fifty products in total. Interesting place, and a lot of interesting characters at that. But listen, guys, it is three p.m. That is much longer than I wanted to do it originally anyway seeing myself in the mirror and late on the tv here the the old hujma bobber so out of the 80 people that are watching now and the many that have came and gone during this stream i thank you all very much thank you for hanging out with me today during this impromptu live stream mail time thank you all for donations you have sent you're going to see your products and gifts and donations in videos in the future for repair replacement enhanced performance I don't know. Um, I would love to find out what we could do about Pymega shirts and some official stuff. Staining on Discord did this one. Some magic. I don't know. It's a great quality shirt. I mean, it's very comfortable. Thick. I got dog hair on it. I always have to tape it off. I take it off as soon as I'm done and I hang it up. It doesn't stink or nothing. So, but yeah. So thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Marco, Steve, Joel, everyone who came on. Um... All my Pymega Beta crew, if you're here, thank you. Jonathan, thank you especially for your wonderful gifts to this channel all the time. That terrible fire is going to be something to reckon with on that CD32. And the CD32, I can't believe you guys got me that. You guys take care of me so much. I'm going to return the favor somehow, some way. Uh, I'm going to use all my donations that I get through Patreon to purchase more pies for the Pymega 3.0 Art Contest. So that is a pre-tickle-tickle -tickle of the alpha maybe of Pymega 3. The rabbit hole functions, the, you know, the pseudo, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to coin the term rabbit hole because I think that was Amikit X, their term. Same emulator. We all use the same emulator. But they have a team of people and I have me and a couple people that help me out. But, you know, thank you guys for watching, tuning in today. I greatly greatly appreciate it and that's all i got for me so thanks for watching and as always i hope you learned something and i'll see you guys on the old interwebs 